Well, the ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon from the Czech Republic. Welcome to the day one of the 2021 World Rowing Under-23 Championships from Hrvatice. We are delighted to be here at the Detroit Rowing Championship in 2020. Well, it's going to be joined by viewers around the world on our YouTube screen here, and I'd also like to offer a warm welcome to everyone who is at the port, and not the competitors, of course, but it's uh, great to have you here as well. So we'll get some noise and some cheers and some atmosphere from everyone that is here. Uh, so that can be the at the time. The weather this afternoon has been pretty good. It's about 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, it's a bit of brightness, a bit of cloud. Uh, not much of the beach to talk about, so the conditions should be very fair. And uh, we've got a lot of races to look forward to. Nine boat classes today, over uh, two and a half hours, almost at three o'clock. So just have a five minutes time with the night working in the pair. My name is Rob Cohen, I'm the English Chief of the Power of Nature, and alongside me is Nero Ross, and Nero, a very good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, 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 Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Rob. Uh, and I'm absolutely delighted to, to be here at the 21 uh, Championship, Under 23 World Rowing Championship. As we see, it's a quick start and a clean start for all of our athletes, but an especially good start for the Italians as they now hold just about one length over the rest of the field. Uh, then it's back to the USA, the Czech Republic. Looks like slight advantage uh, to the, the Czech Republic. And then on the far side, it is Peru. Um, so a good start, a clean start. And Jan, it's looking like the Italians are just aggressive in these first 250. Yeah, the Italians are all the time having really fast starts and really and they rate our rating really fast compared to others right now especially on the second place right now is uh, USA slightly ahead of the Czech Republic můžeme sledujeme právě první závod mistrovství světa do 23 let a poměrně radost nám dělá účast české posádky která je aktuálně na třetím místě závodí zde Nikola Vyčíková s Terezou Cihelkou, jsou to závodnice z pražských klubů a na mistrovství světa je to jejich premiéra. Vede je trenér Dušan Vyčík, otec Nikoli Vyčíková, které aktuálně mohutně podporuje zajisté na kole během kolem závodu. So we have 500 meters from the start and the Italian pair is right now crossing the meter mark at the first position and the second place is the USA. Yeah, that's right, the USA then running second uh, in a nice shot then of the Italian women's lightweight pair as they come through. Great experience in, in this shell. Uh, it is Maria Zerboni, she's the bow seat of the Italian shell. She won bronze in this boat class at the 2018 under, under uh, 23 championships. Uh, but of course she takes on a new partner for this year's event. Uh, that's Samantha Primerl. So a good showing from the Italian pair. Uh, but the USA making a bit of a push now in the body of the race. That's Bonnie Pushner in the bow seat, stroked by Lindsay Rust and some great uh, experience out of this shell too. So not quite overlapping. Uh, but looks like they're having a nice second quarter and a good push on here through the body. Yeah, definitely. The, the whole, the, both the USA and Italy wants to fight for the one place that goes directly, directly to final A. And right now the Italy is backing off the push from the USA and moving a bit farther from the USA duo. But we will see how the second half of the race will develop. I guess the USA will try after the middle of the race, try to get back to the Italians. Yeah, that's right. And just about 750 meters down, as you can see with that meter mark, it continues to be the Italians. As you rightly say, Jan, it is just one to advance to final A. So, of course, the strategy is to get out ahead, ideally to hold that position and to advance directly to the A final, thereby skipping the repechage. It's exactly what the Italians are looking to do. And in fact, they've taken just a little bit more margin over the Americans as they now cross into the second half. The American shell that's Bonnie Pushner, she rose for the lightweight program at Princeton University. Lindsay Rust, uh, Rust rowing lightweight at Stanford University. So some good pedigree in that shell. We'll see what the second half brings them. Yeah, the USA right now increasing a bit their rate. They're rating right now 39 strokes per minute. This is quite high for the middle of the race of the women's lightweight men's lightweight women's pair. And we are za polovinou závodu a v druhé polovině české reprezentacky aktuálně bohužel na čtvrtém místě z tohoto závodu postupuje pouze první posádka. Zdá se, že už šetří své síly na opravnou jízdu, která bude časká v následujících dnech. But we are almost in a set, 700 meters to go and the Italians are still increasing their lead. So how you see it, Colin? Uh, it's a great, it's a great call. The Italians increasing their lead now. The Americans a little bit further back. So it's 750 meters to go. It'll take something special from the Americans, uh, Lindsay Rust and Bonnie Pushner, to skip that repechage and overtake the Italians, closing then in on the final 650 or so. The Italians a fast start, uh, a nice lead. And as you point out, Jan, uh, the Americans rowing it a little bit higher than the Italians. We have the Italians now around 35 uh, and the USA up around 38 so the US certainly trying to go after it but it's looking like the Italians with just over 500 to go yeah the Ita Italians and the USA are in the front but don't forget on a per periodio there are the twins that had a 
birthday yesterday. So happy birthday to them. And hopefully they will be happy with the re result today. And they will continue on a good vibe in the rapper charge that will be that will race in a few days. Yeah, that's right. It's incredible, isn't it? We've got a few sets of twins uh, that we will see in the pairs events across both the lightweight and the open categories, men and women. And of course, in the pair, it's just so important to match uh, perfectly. It's a really difficult boat to row, and it takes a lot of skill. So um, yes, very happy birthday to the, the Peruvian pair. A nice shot then as we move into the final 500 meters. That's the Czech Republic out of lane two uh, and Peru out of lane four but a shot here at the Italian. So quick off the line, a good second quarter into the third quarter. They've kept their momentum. Uh, and now just a long 34 or 36 minutes. Again, very emphasis on the power. Uh, the excess around 37. Uh, just a bit of a line. The Italians are coming in to the final stretch. And it really feels like barring any upset for the first round of the line, even if it's a mile away. 2.50 to go for Rob. Uh, it's a good Yeah, this is pretty strong stuff. Uh, we're looking at the uh, athletes. We have a lot of the scores. And as you said, we're going to start with just the first across the line. Because it's directly through to Saturday's A-Prime. So the other three teams are going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line. And it's going to be the first across the line.
Uh, but Germany gaining speed then into the second quarter of the race. We saw them pass by that 1250 mark uh, and now closing in already uh, toward the 1500 meter mark. So a nice shot here then of this German combination in the under 23 lightweight women's pair. Uh, yes, Turkey was quick off the line, but it's looking really good for Turkey, uh, for Germany rather right now. And that's Antonia Michael and Cecilia Sommerfeld. Yeah, the Germans right now, right now leading, leading the the, the race and they really increased their tempo in the second half of the race but still they had a seven seconds slower first part of the race compared to Italian duo and now they are in the last 500 meters to go and now less than 500 meters to go Germany crossing through to that point first Again, stroked by uh, Antonio Michaels uh, in, or rather in the bow seat. Uh, she rode in this boat class in the 2019 uh, Under 23 Championships in Sarasota, Bradenton, where she took bronze and is now joined by new partner Cecilia Sommerfeld. So this rhythm really working for them. Uh, and again, just as in the prior heat, it is just one to final A. So closing in on the final 250 meters, if you're in the German shell, the strategy is to maintain this lead and take it through the line. The Germans now up at about 33 strokes per minute uh, with a good advantage over the rest of the field as they close in on the final stretch. Uh, just a nice overhead shot then. It's Germany first across into the buoy zone. A quick start, Rob, from Turkey, but it's looking good for Germany now. Yeah, perhaps Turkey just off a little bit too quickly out of the blocks maybe but uh, as you say it looks like it's uh, germany on course to join italy for sure in saturday's a final reprezentantky německa které drží nejrychlejší tempo i pokud se podíváme na sílu záběrů ta kadence je, kadence záběrů je hodně vysoká u závodnic turecka které jsou aktuálně na druhé pozici bylo to vidět také na mezi čase 1500 metrů ukrajinky jsou už výraznější ztrátou na místě číslo 3 německé závodnice ale dělají všechno pro to aby se probojovali rovnou do ačkového finále a mohli tak napřímo bojovat o zlatou stříbrnou a nebo bronzovou medaili na mistrovství světa yeah, Germany still being pushed by the Turkish boat, but uh, I think it's too little too late for Turkey. There's uh, a good couple of boat lengths as uh, Germany just put on a little bit of an extra spurt for these final few meters. Turkey is still challenging, but it's Germany across the line in first place. They qualify directly for Saturday's A final. Turkey, well, they'll be uh, pleased with that performance, and that puts them in good stead to contest the repechage tomorrow for their opportunity to reach the A final. And uh, in third place, it is Ukraine also through to the repechage tomorrow. Suverénní první místo pro německé reprezentantky za 7 minut 35 vteřin a 8 a 20 setin se ztrátou 5 vteřin a 6 desetin. Reprezentantky Turecka, Ukrajinky na třetím místě, druhé a třetí místo musí do oprav. Němky postupují do velkého finále. So we're underway now in the lightweight men's pair. We've got two heats, 11 crews in total. In lane one here is Moldova. Lane two, Italy. In lane three, Mexico. Germany take up lane four with Chile in five. And alongside them in lane six is the USA. Again, it's the first through to the A, uh, first across the line will progress directly to the A final. The remaining crews will have another chance through the repechage. Let's get the latest from Colleen. Yeah, Rob, it's been a, a good first half for the USA, for the Americans. Uh, they were the quickest to the 500 meter mark, that first checkpoint. Uh, they held that speed as they crossed uh, through the thousand. That's USA out of lane six. And now moving through the 1250 meter mark, maintaining that speed, uh, able to, to maintain that lead, at least for now. Uh, their nearest threat then taking a look over at Chile, but a good first half for the USA. Jsme za polovinou závodu lehké dvojky mužů. Máme, sledujeme právě první rozíšku a na prvním místě vidíme loď Ameriky, která má délku zhruba, náskus k délky zhruba jedné lodi před lodí Chile a dále lodí z, Itala, z Itálie. Loď Itálie letos byla reprezentovala na evropském šampionátu, kde získala druhé místo, tedy bronzové stříbrné medaile. Uh. 
and the Americans up at about 40 strokes per minute. So they're working hard to hold that lead. Uh, it's just the first to the A final, as Rob told us. So truly everything on the line. And of course, um, an advantage if you can stay off your feet and have a rest day or just a light training day rather than having to, to race the repechage. The US staying up 39, 40 strokes per minute. They know that they'll need to do everything they can to hold off a charging Chile. Yeah, the Chile is right now speeding up, charging their rate and closing a bit on the USA duo. They are closing to the last 250 meters, but still the USA in the lead, nine meters ahead of the Chile. Third place is in is the Italy. Yeah, an exciting race underway, no doubt. The USA duo, that's Nathaniel Sass and Colin Hay in the bow seat, holding their lead, but Chile still charging, and in fact, Chile closing as we move towards the 250 meter mark. Rob, getting ever so close, the USA will have to watch out for Chile. They're still on the move. Yeah, they are, aren't they, Colleen? Thank you very much. Surprised perhaps to see Moldova trailing quite so far behind because uh, Moldova and Italy were very close in the 2021 European Rowing Championships. These two crews racing here side by side again, but a real battle developing here. Velký souboj, který teď můžeme sledovat rozhodně největší, který jsme zatím viděli v dosavadním průběhu mistrovství světa, protože tohle to je třetí jízda mistrovství světa a velký souboj mezi Spojenými státy americkými a také Čelany. Opravdu se tady bude rozhodovat pravděpodobně v posledních desítkách metrů o přímém postupujícím. Yeah, it's tight right up to the line. There's about uh, three quarters of length in it, but coming home in first place, it is Chile who will take that uh, A final spot directly on Saturday. They have come through and just pipped the USA to the post. Well, what a fantastic finish for Chile. They are through directly to the A final. USA, Germany, Mexico, Italy and Moldova will contest the repechage for another opportunity to make it through to that final. Čelané v páté dráze jeli skvěle poslední pětistovku, protože na mezičase na 15 metrech ztráceli ještě necelé tři vteřiny. Nakonec ale vyhráli a to o tři vteřiny a tři desetiny před spojenými státy. Na třetím místě posádka Itálie. Čelané tedy postupují do Ačkového finále. So heat two underway in the lightweight men's pair with uh, five more crews contesting that direct A final slot with Serbia in lane one. In lane two, it's Austria. The Czech Republic, the home nation, take up lane three. Alongside them in four is Uzbekistan. And in lane five, it is Hungary. And uh, well, what can you tell us about the early stages of this one, Colleen? It looks like we have a clear leader in just the picture then taking a, a look at bow number four. That's Uzbekistan. So um, a good start for them. They've maintained momentum. They've opened up over the field. All of these crews now crossing into the second half. Uh, they'll have to keep an eye then on the far side, though, for Serbia. That's lane one closest to the picture. Serbia on the move as well. Moving into the second half, though, Uzbekistan with a great start. Can they hold this margin, Jan, in the third quarter of the race? Yeah, they have to push right now a bit more just to hold, hold a lead and don't let the Hungarians to come back to them. Sledujeme právě druhou polovinu závodu dvojek mužů lehkých vach a na tráze číslo 3 můžeme vidět českou posádku ve složení Martin Dufek a Adam Lízal. Jsou to závodníci z Brna, kteří jsou vedeni zde pod trenérem Literou. A je také pro ně je to premiéra na mistrovství světa a vůbec i na mistrovství Evropy. Je to vůbec první jejich mezinárodní závod. A nevedou si zatím vůbec špatně. Sice jsou na pátém místě, ale ten odstup od třetí a čtvrté posádky není nějak výrazný. So we are moving in the last third of the race and Uzbekistan is still increasing their lead. 
What exciting, Colin. Yeah, it's an incredible showing from Uzbekistan. Uh, just past that 1,250 down, 750 to go. Uzbekistan holding the lead, Serbia holding second, not quite able to catch them. And then Hungary out of lane five doing everything uh, they can to pull themselves up in it. But it continues to be Uzbekistan uh, out of lane four. This combination, we saw them in uh, the 2019 season uh, in all kinds of sculling boats, a mix of the double, the single, the quad even at World Cup 2 uh, in 2019. So some great pedigree out of this, uh, out of both athletes, and perhaps not surprising to see them having a, a good row here. It continues to be Uzbekistan with 500 meters to go. Yeah, look at how, how smooth those Uzbekistan per pair goes. And the Hungarians are still managing to keep their second position at trying to move out of the Serbian pair that is right now at the third position. We can see in that detail the Uzbekistan duo that is right now in the first position. And just a beautiful look then of their last 500 meters. That's got to feel pretty good to get that lead early, to build momentum through the body of the race, and to continue increasing that lead. That's exactly what they've been able to do. So Uzbekistan holding, it'll take something special, I think, uh, from the Serbs or the Hungarian rowers uh, in order to catch them. And then just a nice shot at the two. And we can see a charging Hungary. That's Balint Boras and Tomas Cins uh, on the move in this final stretch. Uzbekistan, though, holding open water with the final 250 to go, Rob. It'll take something special, I think, uh, for someone to overtake Uzbekistan at this point. Yes, and it's interesting to know how hard they want to push if they think they're not going to make first place, then it's not really going to make any difference uh, where you come in the pack. Is it worth the crew that's chasing now, which is Hungary, uh, then putting everything into trying to get this direct passage through to that A final? Skvělé tempo, které zatím drží Uzbekistánci na druhém místě Maďaři a Srbové na třetí pozici, takhle to platilo na poslední mezičase a my jdeme do cílové rovinky téhleté kategorie, která opět pozná svého prvního finalistu. Yeah, and holding on for that winning spot, it is Uzbekistan. Numeratov and Agafonov uh, come through for a terrific race to get that direct slot to the A final where they know they'll be joining Chile. But a terrific push from Boris and Sinege of uh, Hungary to come through in second. They, along with the Czech Republic, Austria and Serbia, will contest the repercharge. Česká republika a česká dvojice Martin Dufek a Adam Lízal bylo skvělé, že se představili i v této první jízdě, musí ale do oprav stejně jako ostatní posádky, které neskončily na první pozici. Uzbekistánci, kteří ale vedli od prvního mezičasu, nakonec udrželi skvělé tempo. Za 6.49 zvládli 2000 metrů a postupují z prvního místa. On to our next boat class, which is the women's pair. 11 crews across two heats here. And once again, it's the first across the line who will progress directly to the A final. In heat one, lane one, the United States of America. In lane two is Lithuania. In lane three, Austria. Ukraine take up lane four alongside Spain in lane five. Germany in lane six. Who are the good early starters in this one, Colleen? Well, it's been a quick start truly for Spain. And as we look uh, towards just about the, the halfway point or so, Spain continuing to hold on to, to that lead. It was a good start, uh, it looked like, for the US as well. Uh, but as we get this overhead shot now, we can just see Spain with a, a, a very solid lead um, coming then through the halfway point uh, closest to us, that USA duo as well. So Spain, uh, the Americans now moving into the second half. Sledujeme právě první rozíšku dvojek bez kormilnic žen a v první polovině trati aktuálně vede špoň, duo ze Španělska Puigin, Nuria a Ros Martinez Julia, které mají zhruba náskok necelé jedné lodi na duo z Ameriky, kde na štroku sedí Coven Lucy, která zde v Račicích získala v, na juniorském šampionátu stříbrnou medaili. So we are moving almost in, in the last 750 meters to go. And uh, Spain is right now uh, under attack from the USA duo. 
Yeah, that's right. I mean, we look at the times, right? Spain had the fastest time at the 500 and at the 1,000, but the Americans have stayed right on them. So Spain continuing to hold the lead, uh, but the Americans just ever so close. It's one to advance to the A final. In the U.S. boat, that's Caitlin Essay. She just finished her sophomore year at Michigan. Lucy Coven, uh, the, uh, the silver medalist at the 2018 World Rowing Junior Championships. This is the same combination that we saw there, so a lot of history together. And they're just on uh, Spain's tail, but not quite over to take them, uh, able to overtake them yet. Jan getting ever so close here as we move towards the last bit, but it continues to be Spain just by a margin. Yeah, what an exciting race right now for, for the first place, and one place is going directly to final A. So a lot, a huge battle for that place now between the USA and the Spain crew. Both crews are rating right, right now 38 uh, Rate per, per minute. So, and we are moving in the last 500 meters of this race. And it looks like for the first time, the Americans are able to put their bows out ahead. That's right. They're both up at about 38, 39 strokes per minute. The U.S. at 38, Spain at 39. They are trading places. It's now back to Spain, less than 500 meters to go. Neither of these crews wants to race the repechage. And of course, everything on the line uh, and just doing everything in their power to, to get their bow ahead. It's now back to Spain. Spain running first with the Americans running second. Ever so close, Jan, as we close into the final stretch. Yeah, what an exciting race. Changing the places on the first position. Right now, the Spain is moving a bit fr from the USA, but they still have a have power to keep up with the Spain and just slightly get getting back to the second position. On the third position is right now, the crew from the Germany that is one length boat behind the USA. It's 250 meters to go, and taking a look at the field, it continues to be Spain. Rob, I think Spain has it as we close into this last stretch. It'll take something from the Americans, but what an effort over those last few hundred meters. What an effort indeed, and they really are pushed. This is very much a two-horse race, isn't it, for this uh, A final spot, this automatic spot for the A final. It's between these two boats, it's between Spain and the USA. Uh, the others will be through to the repechage. Rozhodně stojí za to bojovat, protože se jede opět o první postupové místo do velkého finále a můžeme vidět ten velký souboj mezi Španělkami a také závodnicemi ze Spojených států. Španělky jsou z pohledu kamera trošku vzdálené, jsou v páté dráze, američanky jsou v dráze číslo jedna, poslední desítky metrů, které rozhodnou o první pozici. It looks like Spain, but the USA not giving up here on the near side. They are really pushing Spain every inch of the way here. But it's going to be Spain who crossed the line ahead of the USA. Spain are through. They take it by a length and a half from the USA. So the USA and the remaining crews will uh, contest the repechage. Spain, though, goes straight through to the A final. Posledních 200 metrů bylo v režii Španěle, které to nakonec zvládly a po dvou kilometrech si připsali první místo a postup do finále mistrovství světa kategorie do 23 let. Američanky na druhém místě, poslední část jeli skvěle také Němky, které jsou třetí a tak dále. To jsou závodnice, které musí ještě do oprav Španělky, ale postupují do finále z prvního místa. So who will join Spain with that direct route through to the weekend's A final? From heat two, we've got Croatia in lane one. In lane two, it's France. Canada take up lane three. Alongside them in lane four, it's Denmark with the home nation, the Czech Republic, in lane five. So early stages, Colleen, what can you gain from uh, these uh, early stages of this second heat? Well, early stages, Rob, I have to tell you, my eye is on Croatia. They were first, uh, first across that 500 meter checkpoint we now see the thousand meter mark uh, point as well and it continues to be Croatia we have another set of twins so Ivana Jurkovic and Josipa Jurkovic uh, so you see that often in the pair as we've mentioned because uh, the skill and the the level of um, just how much you have precision of how much you need to match oftentimes that comes across just perfectly with twins and that's uh, certainly the case here for this Croatian duo so a nice margin over 
over the rest of the field. It is Croatia, uh, and then we'll have a look at the rest of the field. It's France, uh, Canada, Denmark, and then local favorites, the Czech Republic, which Jan, I'm sure you can tell us a thing or two about. Právě sledujeme českou, českou posádku, která v druhé rozíce dvojek bez, bez kormidelníka žen a česká posádka Eliška podrazová Nikola Kropáča, jak je na čtvrté, páté pozici. A obě, obě tyto posádky mají zkušenosti z mistrovství světa juniorů a mimo jiné i zde v Račicích aktuálně drží pátou pozici na první pozici chorvatské duo dvojčat Jurkovič Velice zkušená dvojce. So the Czech crew is right now in fortune in fifth place, but we hope for, for the better results during this World Championship. And the Croatians are increasing their lead with a nice and smooth row in the front. Yeah, the Croatians at 35 strokes per minute, so really getting a lot of run with power. You can see the leverage and the leg drive, the precision uh, from these sisters, from these twins. They took silver in World Cup three in the women's pair. Of course, uh, for the World Cup series, racing up a category in terms of seniority. Uh, so they've got a lot of racing under their belt this season. That started with the European Championships where they took fifth. They've continued to gain speed throughout the season, winning uh, World Cup one and again second at World Cup three. Uh, so just putting on a show then as they come through this final 500 meter mark, uh, that Croatian Croatian women's pair, two sisters, Ivano Jurkovic and Josipa Jurkovic. Yeah, probably no doubt, no doubt about the winner of this heat. The Croatian duo has uh, three or four balls lengths ahead of the second pair from the France. Now the Canada is actually moving slightly on the second place, but the only first goes to the final A. Yeah, it's just first to advance. So now we see, um, you know, Croatia at that that nice long 35, 36 strokes per minute. And as we've mentioned earlier too, it really comes down to a decision point as to whether these crews decide, the crews behind uh, Croatia, whether they, they want to execute a full sprint or not. Um, a look across the field, it looks like everyone as they move into the final 250 uh, recognizes that Croatia will, will take the lead, Rob, as they come through. Yes, indeed, Colleen. And they make it look so comfortable and easy, don't they, Croatia? That's a very easy stroke. They've got the uh, twins, the Jokovic twins, and they are closing in now on that finish line. I don't think the challenge from France uh, over there is going to be uh, good enough to uh, really challenge. It's going to be Croatia coming through to take that A final spot. Chorvatky, které letos jeli skvělé závody světového poháru, protože na nich obsadili první a druhé místo, si jedou pro suverénní postup z první pozice české reprezentantky aktuálně na místě číslo pět. Yes, indeed. Croatia go through then and they take that direct passage through to the uh, A final spot. That's a, a great road from them when they join uh, Spain with that direct passage as well. So the remaining crews will uh, contest the repechage with a second opportunity to make it through to that A final. Chorvatky potvrzené na první pozici za 7 minut 20 vteřin a 93 setin. Francouzky, Kanaděnky, Dánky, tak jak to bylo na posledním mezičase po 15 stech metrech. Teď už jsme ale kompletní a my se společně můžeme podívat také na pět jednotlivých dvojic, které prošly právě touto rozíškou. Na pátém místě nakonec české reprezentantky Nikola Kropáčková, Eliška Podrazilová. So we move on to a new category and a lot of crews here in this one. It's the lightweight men's pair, 22 crews in total across three heats. And then this first heat in lane one, it is South Africa. Denmark take up lane two alongside Uruguay in lane three. In lane four, it's Slovenia with Croatia in lane five, Lithuania taking up lane six. Well, uh, Jan remains in the commentary box, but alongside him now, it's uh, the turn of Kat Holloway uh, to take over commentary duties. And Kat, what are the early stages of this race shaping up to look like? Hi, Rob. It's great to be here alongside you commentating at the Under-23 World Championships. And what a great race this is. On screen now, we can see the Lithuanian pair. So these guys are twins. We've got Demantes and Dividus Stankunas of Lithuania. And they've had an absolutely flying first half of this race. 
So these guys, they've been to the Olympic qualification regatta this year in the four, and they missed out on that qualifying uh, slot for Tokyo. They finished seventh in that qualifying regatta, but fantastic season they're having. And we see them here leading this race ahead of another set of twins, the Loncharic brothers from Croatia. So shaping up to be a fantastic first heat in the men's pair, Jan. Yeah, really nice heat. The, the fight between two twins, Lon Karčić from Croatia and Stan, Stan Kunas from Lithuania. Sledujeme právě první rozíšku dvojek mužů na prvním místě aktuálně dvoj, dvojce z, Litv, z Litvy. Jedná se o dvojčeta Stanku, Stan Kunasovi a hned za nimi těsně v závěsu je opět dvojce z, z Chorvatska. Také se jedná o, o dvojčata Lon Karčilovi. A uvidíme, jak dopadne poslední pětisovka tohoto závodu. Nic zatím není vůbec rozhodnuto. První dvě lodě jdou do semifinále. So we are in the last 500 meters. Kat, how you see the first two goes to the semifinal? Yeah, just two going straight to the semifinal. That will take place on Friday morning. It's scheduled for 11.40. So with two boats going straight through, I've, I've got to back the Lithuanians and the Croatians at this stage. So through 1,500 meters here, the Lithuanians have, have gone through a boat length ahead of Croatia. And the rest of the crews will have to fight it out in the repechage tomorrow for an all-important place in the semifinal. Yeah, Lithuania, Lithuania right now rating 36 Maybe they are a bit lower than the Croatians right now, rating 37. Other crews rating a bit more. So we are moving in the last 250 meters. So what, how do you think, the Rob, this will end? Well, that's a good question, and it's great to see a close competition here. Um, Mira, I'm going to throw it over to you just while I try and fix a slight technical problem here. A v tuto chvíli už se jdeme pro první a druhé místo, to znamená pro ty, kteří postoupí do semifinále této kategorie. Kategorie, která má i hned tři rozíšky, my jsme ale první z nich a v tuto chvíli můžeme sledovat ten velký souboj. Litevci jedou skvěle, vedle nich jsou ale také závodníci Chorvatska, to je tedy konkrétně šestá a pátá dráha a v tuto chvíli tedy dvojice, které by měly už podle všeho udržet první a druhé místo. Be Croatia, who just take it by a half a boat length ahead of Lithuania in second place. So those are our two direct semi-final qualifi uh, qualifiers. Uh, the remaining crews uh, coming through there just now in lane one is uh, South Africa. Uh, they are lo uh, sorry, in lane three is Uruguay, but they, along with crews such as South Africa, Denmark, uh, Slovenia, will uh, contest the repechage for another chance to make it through to the semi-finals. Je to také potvrzeno a právě teď jsme tedy viděli první souboj. Tohle byla první rozíška, viděli jsme tam Chorvaty, kteří byli letos třetí na světovém poháru. Opravdu velká konkurence v rámci mistrovství světa kategorie do 23 let. So to the second heat then of the under 23 men's pair with Germany in lane one. In lane two, it's Great Britain, Uzbekistan in lane three. Greece take up lane four alongside Italy in five. The United States of America in lane six. Uh, early reports, um, Kat? So early reports, Rob, it's been a great showing in this first half for the pair from Great Britain, Calvin Tarsi and Dower de Graaf. And it's no surprise to me, they've come into this event as one of the favoured crews. They've had a fantastic season, picking up a silver medal in the Sabaudia World Cup earlier on in the season. And they're moving so, so well in this first heat. And I'm pretty sure they're going to take one of these two slots in the semi-final. And there are a few crews battling out for that second spot, Jan. Yeah, there are a few there, there is a crew from the Germany and the Greece that are right now battling for the second spot for the qualifying spot to the semi-final. Právě sledujeme druhou rozíšku mužů dvojek a na prvním místě naprosto dominuje posádka z Velké Británie, která má aktuálně náskok 
zhruba dvou télek lodí před posádkou z Řecké republiky, která si teď vytváří jistý náskok před svými soupeři na druhém místě, které první dvě místa se tedy kvalifikují přímo do semifinále. But Luke also on an Italian pair that is right now moving with the Greece one for that second spot for the semifinal. Yeah, here's the battle here between lane four, Greece. You see that number on, on the bow wall of the boat there, just half a length here ahead of Italy. The Italians have taken that race up and they're really fighting for that second qualifying place. Nice shot here. We see the lead Great Britain's gotten that battle. Italy pushing Greece so hard now, Jan. Yeah, the Italians and Greece are fighting neck and neck for every every centimeter of this race. And find it looks like the Italians rate writing rating right now a bit higher than the Greece. Greece has a really long and smooth smooth tempo and still have the shot for the sixth place right now. That is is the USA. So here riding with the British crew again in the stroke seat, Dower de Graaf, Calvin Tarsi in the bows. They learnt to row at St Paul's School in London under Bobby Thatcher. Incredibly successful career there at junior level with two junior gold medals and um, now rowing at Harvard University. But with COVID situation, they've been in the UK and not over in the States and so able to join this under 23 team. So here, it looks pretty calm in that boat to me. They're well ahead. They can feel confident. The boat's moving on really nicely for them at this stage. Yeah, it looks like the Great Britain is confident in the first position, but we see the battle for the second place. What, what do you think about it, Rob? Well, I think it's looking very good for Great Britain. Very interesting to hear the story of the uh, two guys in, in the British boat as well. But they're going to have to keep their game sharp here to make sure of uh, getting that first spot for the uh, AB semi-final. Britové jedou skutečně nejlépe a zatím dělají všechno pro to, aby skončili minimálně na druhém místě, ale jedou o první pozici. První a druhé místo znamená postup do semifinále právě této kategorie. A o druhé a třetí místo se bude hodně tvrdě bojovat. Konkrétně tam vidíme Itály, kteří jedou velmi dobře, tak jak dopadne tento souboj z řeky o druhou a třetí pozici. Yeah, it's Great Britain through in first place and just taking second spot. It looked to me like Italy. It was the slightest, slightest of margins between uh, Italy and Greece alongside them. But uh, I've got it in my eyes as Great Britain first and Italy second as the two crews will go directly through to the AB semifinals. Počkáme na oficiální výsledky, ale tak, jak to bylo vidět právě v cílové rovince a v cílové linii, Britové suverénně na první pozici, Italové na druhém místě, to je tedy postup do semifinále, Řekové nakonec jako třetí. So the third heat then of three of the men's pair is underway with five more crews contesting two more direct passages through to the AB semi-final. It's Turkey in lane one, Spain taking up lane two alongside the Czech Republic in three. Then it's France in lane four, Romania in lane five. Good starts, I think, from all five crews. Are we going to see as exciting and closer finish, I wonder, in this one as we did in the previous heat, Kat? Yeah, we're joining the race now, Rob, as they come up to this 1,000 meter mark. And two crews again to go through from this second heat directly to the AB semi-final. And it's close there up front between these first uh, two place crews. We've got the Spanish crew moving well um, just in the picture now. But at the head of the course, it is uh, Turkey and France. Yeah, I and mean, see also in this race, the Czech crew Currently, unfortunately, fifth place. This duo is uh, racing together for a long time. They have been together on a European Championship in, in 2019. A sledujeme druhou polovinu závodu. Dvojek mužů. A v této, v této rozdíce se nám představilo i české duo Albert Caban, Jan Šinkovský, které aktuálně bohužel na páté pozici, což znamená zatím nepustupuje do semifinále AB. 
So we are almost 750 meters to go. So how, how the race developed, Kat? Yeah, it's a really tight one here. This is the closest race so far today in the heats. So closest to us, the Turkish crew is stroked by Aydin Sahin and Khan Aydin in the bows. So they've raced this year on the senior circuit. They raced in the pair at the European Championships with a 13th place and also in Zagreb at the World Cup with a sixth place finish. So they've already travelled internationally. They've already raced in a COVID safe regatta. They've had that racing experience and I think they're bringing that to the water here and doing so, so well. But this shot here to my eye, um, it looks like they're being pushed hard by France now. Yeah, right now there are the three crews that are fighting for two spots going directly to semi-final AB and there's a Turkey in lane one, Spain and France and, and Romania. I guess the Romania from their type of rowing we can expect a really fast last 250 meters rating really high. Yeah, I think that's the Romanian trademark, taking that rate yeah. off and flying towards the line. And that Romanian crew, as we saw them go past here, they're well placed there alongside France. If they've got a big sprint for this heat through the closing stages, then they could find themselves as one of those two qualifying places to the AB semi-final. So the Turkish still attacking here, still driving on. They're certainly not completely safe, uh, even though they're still at the head of the field here in these last few hundred metres. We see the French crew there in the middle of the picture the Romanians still tracking half a length down on them and 250 to go Rob it's an exciting one here yeah it really is it's another close race isn't it and it's uh, fantastic to see uh, both all these crews pushing away but uh, Turkey and uh, Romania and France all pushing for these uh, two AB semi-final spots Vidíme souboje Turecka, Francie a také Rumunska. Sami můžete v tuto chvíli také na velkoplošné obrazovce, protože zdravíme a vítáme všechny diváky, kteří sledují první den mistrovství světa kategorie do 23 let. Vidět tento souboj o první a druhé místo, které znamená automatický postup do semifinále v této kategorii. Well, it couldn't be much tighter than this, but it looks like the crew in lane four, France, are just no, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> I beg your pardon, it is Turkey who have held off the challenge from the French. French looked like they were just going to come through, but both Turkey uh, and France go through directly to the AB semi-final. And over there in uh, lane five, Romania just missing out, but a terrific charge from them, creating a very, very exciting finish to this third heat of the under-23 men's pair. Rumunská dvojice, která nestačila v posledních desítkách metrů a nakonec končí na třetí pozici. Francouzi jako druzí závodníci z Turecka na prvním místě právě první a druhé místo jde automaticky do semifinále. A my v tuto chvíli vidíme také na páté pozici Jana Šimkovského a Alberta Cabana za Českou republiku. So we're upping the pace a little bit now. Things are going to get a little faster. It's the first heat of the lightweight men's quadruple skulls. And in heat one of this, uh, we've got France in lane one, who were given a yellow card for being late at the start. Denmark take up lane two, with Hungary in lane three. In lane four, it's Turkey. In lane five, Ukraine. And uh, that is, of course, a very quick start. It looks like it's a good start there for France in lane one, Kat. France in that yellow boat. We just saw them slip out of the picture to the left-hand side as they came through the 1,000-metre mark, leading the way ahead of Turkey. And the French certainly coming into this race with some pedigree. A um, couple of the rowers on board here, Baptiste Savayeta in the three-seat, Pierrick Verge in the bow seat. They raced together in the lightweight men's quads in uh, Varese and in the under-23 championships in 2019. Both times they got the silver medals. So these guys have picked up medals before and they're moving well with these two new members of the crew holding that length lead ahead of Turkey. Yeah, look how smooth the French quadruple skull just goes. How relaxed they look. The second place right now, the Turkey crew, which is slightly get closing the gap on the friends. Sledujeme právě první rozjížku mužů lehkých vach párové čtyřky a na prvním místě zatím loď Francie, na druhém místě 
Turecka. A to jsou zatím dvě lodě, které by měly postoupit do finále A. So the first two crews going to the final A right now it looks like the France and Turkish are getting those spots. Exactly, it looks so good for these two crews. They've got a convincing margin over the rest of the field. The closest to them is uh, the crew from the Ukraine right on the far side of the course, but they've got a huge gap to make up and with only 500 meters left, it's looking pretty safe for France to the left of your picture and Turkey alongside them. Yeah, it looks like the France doesn't want to give any chance to Turkish crew. That seems like they are happy with the second place right now, which means they will go directly to final A. Back in the field, it's quite even between the third and fifth position. It's a nice shot here of that relaxed French style. They really hang nicely off the blades. They've got a quick catch. They're using that relaxation, moving through the water, and it looks effortless. It certainly isn't effortless, but the technique is very polished here from this French crew, and it's just given them a chance to move away from Turkey and extend their lead at the head of the course. So 250 meters to go. It looks good for France, Rob. It really does. That beautifully described uh, cat in terms of how it looks. It does look like they're just having a nice outing, doesn't it? <laughs> On a nice sunny afternoon, but uh, they're so together. Of course, it's immensely hard work uh, racing uh, 2,000 meters in these boats, but the French are doing it so beautifully and looking very well placed for the first spot here. Můžeme sledovat pět párových čtyřech lehkých vah. Bojujeme opět o první dvě místa, která postupují do finále zatím a francouzi skvělým způsobem, protože ty máme v dráze číslo jedna. Pojďme se ale podívat také na další čtyřku, která postoupí do semifinále mistrovství světa kategorie do 23 let. Yes, it is France who crossed the line in first place. A really good road from these guys. And it is uh, going to be Turkey in lane four who take the second direct passage through to the A final. But uh, really good performances all round as Denmark come through in fourth place. And the remaining crews uh, will also uh, go through to the repechage for a second chance to get through to that semi-final. Viděli jsme v tuto chvíli tedy skvělý výkon francouzské čtyřky. Závodníci, kteří se narodili od roku 1999 do roku 2002, to znamená, že ten nejmladší ze členů bude ještě pěkně dlouho v kategorii do 23 let, kde můžeme sledovat světový šampionát právě v České republice v Račicích. Heat two of the lightweight men's quadruple skulls. Who's going to challenge France, do you think, come the weekend? Well, Germany are in lane one here. USA in two. Spain in lane three. The Czech Republic in lane four. With Italy in lane five. And uh, any early indications how this one might go, Kat? Yeah, the early indication is this yellow boat on the left of the, of the screen here. So they had a fantastic first quarter of the race, this German crew. They've moved really well together to get this length advantage over the crew on the opposite side of the course, which is Italy. So Italy currently riding in second place with Germany leading the way. Yeah, Germany and Italy are those crews that are having really strong lightweight teams every year on every rowing regattas. Currently in the third and fourth, third and fourth position is USA and Spain, not far behind from the Italy. Sledujeme druhou polovinu závodu rozjíždky mužů lehké chvách párové čtyřky, kde se představí i Česká republika. Naš naš troku je Šanda Vojtěch, Málek Málek Vojtěch za ním, Kvapil Jan a Pins Denis, kteří aktuálně jsou na Páté pozici a pro ně je to první start vůbec na mistrovství světa, takže zde sbírají zkušenosti do dalších let. And here is the shot for on on the German crew. Look how they smooth also looks, same as the France in the first heat. Yeah, Jan, I've got to agree with you. And for everyone listening at home, we were just talking about the lightweight men's quads event and how we love this event. The athletes not as powerful as the heavyweight athletes. They've got to make the most of their skill. And it's a great exhibition of that here from this German crew. Also on the far side, the Italians moving well and they're moving that boat in a slightly different way to the German crew. They're racing slightly higher. The strokes are possibly a touch shorter and it's giving them good boat speed. They've got overlap with the Germans coming back on them slightly here and they've got three quarters of a length to make up if they want to take that first position. 
Yeah, it look, looks like the Italians want to step up right now, rating 40 strokes per minute compared to Germany that is at 37 strokes per minute. Looks like the Italians are rating way higher than the than the German crew in on the Empacher boat right now, crossing the 500, 500 final 500 meters to go. Yeah, through this 500 meter mark, the German crew have led ahead of Italy. Spain's the closest to them, with two boats to go straight through to Saturday's A final. It looks good for Germany and it looks good for Italy. Yes, and yet again, as we saw with the French crew, and you were outlining it as well there, is just how smooth this German crew looks. That's perfectly synchronised. But they are aware of what's going on to their left with uh, that crew from Italy over in lane five. There's a big challenge there, but uh, if both crews uh, progress in this order, they will both directly go through to the AB semi-final. So the third place crew has got a lot of work to do here. It looks like it's going to be Germany and Italy who will go through directly to the semis. Nejlépe to vypadá z pohledu drah číslo 5 a také jedna, tedy Italové a Němci, protože první a druhé místo postupují přímo do finále. Tohle to je postupový klíč, který platí také pro rozíšku číslo 2, kde můžeme vidět také českou čtvrtici Pins, Kvapil, Máleka, Šanda. To jsou závodníci, kteří mají premiéru na světovém šampionátu a zatím jí patří páté místo. V tuto chvíli už pojďte ale společně s námi do posledních desítek metrů a výborné výkony jak německé, tak také italské posádky. Italy pushing all the way and really upping the rate. They want to make Germany work really hard for this win. Germany crossed the line in first place. It's uh, a length between them and second place uh, Italy. They are the direct semi-final qualifiers. And then coming home uh, in third place, it's going to be Spain, who are just uh, easing off now. And uh, in lane two, it's the United States. And coming home in fourth place, the Czech Republic, uh, just getting down to the finish line. No point in pushing at this stage because they know that they are now go through to the repechage for another chance to qualify for those semi-finals. Posádky na třetím až pátém místě jdou do oprav, to znamená, že mají ještě šanci do postup do semifinále a také hlavně finále, v tomto případě tedy párové čtyřky lehkých vach, postupují ale do finále konkrétně z první pozice Němci a ze druhého místa Italové. So we now move on to the women's quadruple skulls. Three heats here with 13 crews in total. And this time it's the first three across the line who will qualify for the AB semi-finals directly. Denmark go in lane one in this first heat with Germany in two, Ukraine in lane three. In lane four, it's the USA with Estonia in lane five. Early thoughts on this one, Kat? So as you say, three boats to go through to the AB semi-final, Rob, and we're joining this race just through about 750 metres to go. Uh, sorry, gone. And this German crew looks good there in the centre of your picture, as does the crew on the far side of the course. That's the Estonian crew, and the Estonians have some pedigree in quad sculling. So here we're riding with the Germans, and I'm thinking they're leading this race. And there's a famous name here in the bow seat, Jan. Yeah, on, on, on the bow we, we can see the Marie-Sophie Seidler, the sister of the famous singles car, Oli Seidler. So we hope maybe in the next Olympic Games we will see this duo in the one at those Olympic Games in Paris. Yeah, certainly an exciting trajectory for this women's quad from Germany here to be able to aim for that Paris Olympics in 2024. And look at that margin at 1,000 metres ahead of Estonia. So three boats to go through to the AB semi-final on Friday. And uh, the German boat well out in ahead there. Estonia in second place. The USA still with overlap in third. Sledujeme první rozíšku čtyřek párových žen. Aktuálně v této rozíšce se představuje Posádka z Dánska, Německa, Ukrajiny, Spojených států amerických a Estonska. První tři posádky z každé rozíšky párových čtyřek postupí přímo do semifinále AB. Ostatní posádky budou muset jít do oprav a aktuálně na první pozici můžeme vidět loď Německa, která výrazným způsobem má výrazný náskok před ostatními posádkami. 
So through 1250 meters, and we've had that close up here on the German crew. And I love to see this. They've got this fluid style. And to me, it's so German. They've got that little break of the arms at the front end of the stroke. You don't see all nations doing this. For me, it's a specific style that we've seen over the years from German women sculling. And it works so effectively for them in the quad. They're moving this boat really, really nicely. And just on the far right of your picture, we've got the crew from the USA. And three of these athletes actually from the Orion Club, coached by Christy Wagner. And Christy Wagner is, in fact, the double sculler who will be going to Tokyo with Jevy Stone. So great to see this athlete who's taking part in the Tokyo Olympics also contributing to this new generation of scholars coming up with this aim to go to Paris uh, in 2024. Yeah, really good point, Kat, about the German style. Rating right now 34 strokes per minute. Right now, we see the Estonian quadruple skull going through the last 500 meter mark and at the third position also progressing to the semi-final AB is going the right now the USA crew. And we've just seen Denmark go through in fourth place, Ukraine in fifth place and back riding with this German crew again. And they've got to be feeling confident up here at the head of the course. They've got a clear margin ahead of the second place crew. They're going to bank one of these spots in the AV semi-final on Friday. So that means that tomorrow they get a rest day. They get to train in the way that they want to do. They won't be going through the repercharge. And Rob, with just 250 metres to go, it looks pretty good for these three boats to go through to the AV semi-final directly. Yeah, it does. Now, it doesn't look like the challenge from the remaining crews is uh, going to be pose too much of a problem. But uh, yeah, I love that description of the the, the technique that this German boat uh, is using here and employing to great effect as they come down, looking almost certain to take this first spot. Naprosto suverénně skrze jednotlivé mezičasy po pětistovce kilometru, patnáctistovce a také do cílové rovinky. Takhle to vypadá v podování čtveřice z Německa. Závodnice, které teď neohroženě jedou pro první místo a také pro postup. Když pro postup, tak konkrétně v téhle té disciplíně a kategorii do semifinále mistrovství světa kategorie do 23 let. And just look how easy and effortless it looks as they go through the 2,000 metre mark. The finish line is gone there for the German crew and uh, just smooth, effortless work from them. And they are through directly to that uh, semi-final. Coming home in second place in uh, lane five, it's Estonia. They will be joined by the USA to go through to the AB semi-final. A great performance from uh, all five crews here, but those three in particular know that their job is done for today for Denmark and for uh, UK. Ukraine has a little more work to do yet when they contest the repercharge. Tuto chvíli tedy první dvě posádky, které postupují, suverénní závodnice z Německa a skvěle to zvládly také Estonky, které jsme sledovali v dráze číslo 5. Second heat of the women's quad skulls is underway. Four more crews uh, contesting three semi-final spots. So as long as you don't come last year, you're through. It's Switzerland in lane one, Netherlands in two, Poland in lane three, the Czech Republic in lane four. I wonder how you're reading this one, Kat. So we're just looking at the screen and we're smiling for the home crew here, the Czech Republic. They're the crew at the top of your picture and they look good to be in one of these qualifying slots to go straight through to the AB semi-final. So up there at the head of the course is Poland and Switzer, Switzerland just behind them. Czech Republic currently riding in third as they come through halfway. Yeah, the Czech Republic stroked by the Simona Paškova with a lot of experience in the quadruple skull. Having the fourth position in 2019 in Junior Championship in Tokyo, but right now at the first and second position are the Polish and the Swiss crew. It's a nice battle here, neck and neck here at the front of the course. The Polish at the top of the picture. They've got. Uh, 
a real history in the quadruple skulls, women's quadruple skulls in Poland. It's an event that they've excelled in for a number of years. And it's great to see this boat at under 23 level coming up and rising into the shoes of the senior quad we see stroked by Katarzyna Zilman. So they've got some great ambassadors and role models for this event. And then closest to you in the yellow boat, the Swiss crew, uh, they have on board Lisa Lodger, who raced in the Zagreb World Cup. She picked up a bronze medal with their senior women's quad and a nice unit here from Switzerland. These two crews pretty much neck and neck here and the Czech crew just a length behind Jan. Česká republika aktuálně v závodě čtyřech párových žen je aktuálně na třetí místě velice zhruba jednu loď za dvojcí z Polska a Švýcarska, které aktuálně Bojí o první pozici, zase se, že Švýcarsko zatím je na tom o trochu lépe než e, polská párová čtyřka, ale e, česká posádka není vůbec vzdálená těmto dvou, těmto dvou lodím, především lodi z Polska. A třetí místo by pro naši párovou čtyřku znamenalo postup přímý do semifinále A, B. So through 1500 meters now, you see that gap right the way back to this Dutch crew just passing through the timing marker now. The Dutch crew, it's their international debut, so none of them raced before at junior or under 23 level, and uh, they're coming into this race for their first international experience. And here at the front of the race, we see Switzerland have now managed to pull out a margin of just over half a length ahead of Poland. Poland still just over a length ahead of the Czech Republic and these three crews really can be confident of their qualifying place to Friday's AB semi. Yeah, beautiful row from the Swiss quadruple skull currently at the first position moving in the last 250 meters rope. Thank you very much. Yes, it looks fairly well set now, the, the front three here, doesn't it? It's just uh, quite which order they will finish in. But uh, Switzerland going very strongly in first place ahead of Poland and the Czech Republic. Čtyřčlené zastoupení a první tři posádky postupují do semifinále, buď to Ačkového nebo Bčkového a je skvělé, že české dámy a české reprezentantky se stále drží mezi třemi nejlepšími. Nakonec to bude mnohem, mnohem napínavější a těsnější, než to by padalo na prvním kilometru. V každém případě Švýcarky si jedou pro první pozici právě v téhleté rozíčce, která je tak důležitá pro postup do velkého semifinále, respektive finále v tuto chvíli, ale semifinále této kategorie Švýcarky na prvním místě. Yes, Switzerland across the right line in first place, just ahead of Poland in second. And it's just half a length between them and the Czech Republic in fourth place. Great to see the Czechs coming through and going directly through to the AB semi-final. And for this new Dutch crew just coming up to the finish line now, they'll relish the chance and the opportunity to have another go in the repechage. Skvělý výkon českých reprezentantek Valentína Solařová, Zuzana Štěpánková, Michala Pospíšilová a Simona Pašková, závodnice, které za Českou republiku postupují do semifinále této kategorie. Nizozemky musí do oprav, nizozemky, které jsou ale skutečně hodně mladé v kategorii do 23 let, od 15 do 18 let, takhle je tvořená jejich posádka. První místo Švýcarky. So the third and final heat of the women's quadruple skulls gets underway and it's four more crews contesting those three direct spots through to the AB semi-final with Romania taking up lane one alongside Italy in lane two. In lane three, it's Russia with Canada in lane four. Any clear favourites in these early stages, uh, Kat? It looks a nicely contested race, this. Yeah, Rob, it really does look like a nicely contested race. And coming away from that 750 meter mark, we can see the Russian crew are doing very well here. The Canadian crew up there at the top of the picture also in touch, as are Italy. So we've got three crews to go through and the Romanians uh, seem to be the ones out the back who might be uh, uh, going to miss out on one of those qualifying slots. So we get a better view here of the gaps between the crews. They come through 1,000 and the Italians here moving really nicely. The Russians still with overlap and Romania still in touch with the Canadians here. So we could be on with a battle for these qualifying places for the AB semi. Yeah, Italy crew looking, looking really comfortable at the first position with uh, almost one length of, of the boat ahead of the Russia. Sledujeme druhou polovinu závodu, třetí rozíšky čtyřek párových, aktuálně na první pozici loď z Itálie, na druhé pozici 
ruská párová čtyřka a na třetí zároveň tedy postupující pozici loď Kanady. So the Canadian crew on the top of the, the top of the picture there uh, and the Romanians here to the to the closest to the camera they're vying it out for this third place spot. And in that Canadian crew, so the stroke woman at Grace Vandenbroek, she's 190 centimeters tall, so very, very tall athlete. And she's raced here on the Rachitse course before. She competed in the single skull when the junior world championships were here in 2018, and she finished second in the B final then. And since then, she's also picked up a medal at junior level um, in the women's double skulls. And she's setting up that rhythm really nicely in the Canadian crew there. And that's just given them about a half length advantage ahead of Romania. But we talked about this earlier on today, and we know that the Romanians, the way their training works, they can really pull out a sprint at the end of a race, can't yeah, they? Yeah, exactly, Kat. The Romanians can rate really high, so we'll see in the last 500 meters to go. But right now, I think the Canadians are qu quite a bit farther from, from, the, from the Romanians. And we'll see how it will progress in the last 500 meters. Yeah, 500 meters to go. And Italy with a clear lead here in this race. So some medals at junior world level here from two of the athletes in this boat. The stroke woman, Vittoria Tonoli, picked up a silver medal at the junior world championships in 2018. Lucrezia Baudino in the two seat, she's got a gold medal from the same championships. And interestingly, those medals came from sweep boats and they've made the transition here since 2018 into this sculling boat. And it's moving really nicely for them. They've still got that length advantage over Russia. So Rob, coming into the closing stages, Italy moving nicely at the front here, but we could be in with a sprint on our hands between Romania and Canada for that third qualifying slot. Yeah, just looking at that, Kat, Romania are really putting a push now in this uh, first lane, lane one nearest to us. And don't know if you quite see them in the picture here because we're focusing on Italy, who look like they're going to take first place, but it's uh, a big challenge for third and fourth. Sledujeme posledních 180 metrů třetí rozjížky párové čtyřky na první pozici Italky, Rusky na druhém místě a tohle to bude především souboj o třetí a čtvrtou pozici, protože tři posádky postupují do semifinále. Je hodně důležité teď sledovat právě jednotlivé dráhy číslo jedna a čtyři, protože tam je v tuto chvíli aktuálně největší souboj. Well, it's a superb push from Romania. Are they going to do it? It's Italy who are going to cross the line in first place with the Russians going through in second. And in third place, it is Romania. What an extraordinary push from them. A fabulous effort to assure themselves a direct qualification for that AB semi-final. Canada had the edge all the way down the course, but just couldn't, couldn't catch that challenge from Romania who take third place. So it's Italy, Russia and Romania through directly to the AB semi-final. Semifinal Canada will have to go again in the repechage. Rumunky to nakonec zvládli, jak můžeme vidět také u oficiálních výsledků porazili o jednu vteřinu a dvě desetiny Kanaďanky, které musí do oprav z první pozice, ale Italky ze druhého místa, závodnice z Ruska a nakonec tedy třetí postupové místo do semifinále párové čtyřky v kategorii žen Rumunsko. So on to our next boat category. It is the under-23 men's four. Heat one here she sees Switzerland in lane one. It's Belarus in lane two. In lane three, Romania. Lane four, Brazil. Austria are in lane five with United States in lane six. And I think Colleen's back in the driving seat with Jan next door. Colleen, how's this one looking? Oh, it's looking fantastic. And I'm thrilled to, to be back here next to Jan. Uh, as we can see, just a gorgeous overhead shot. And it's looking like a nice press for the Romanians here out of lane three. So just in uh, the, the center there. Um, and then out of lane four, Brazil, Austria, lane five, uh, and USA on the far side over in lane six. So closest to us, keeping an eye then on Romania. And of course, we can see see uh, Austria making a bit of a press as well as they move through halfway. Sledujeme právě polovinu závodu rozjížky, první rozjížky mužů čtyře bez kormidelníka aktuálně na postupových pozicích jsou lodě Rumunská a Běloruska. Rumunsko mývá v této kategorii velmi rychlou posádku každý rok a to teď předvádí i v první jízdě tohoto závodu. So the first place right now for the Rum Romania slightly Moving from the second Belarus and 
on the third is the crew from the Swiss. What can you say about the Swiss crew? Colin. Oh, the Swiss crew is looking good. And I think they're doing everything they can to get um, really back into it. As we know, it's just two to semifinal A, B, uh, and Belarus and uh, Romania making it known that they want to be the crews to go uh, with a nice push then out of lane three, Romania, we can see on the far side. The Swiss, though, staying right in it. Um, and yes, what can we say about the Swiss crew? Uh, well, they've raced together a fair amount this, senior, uh, this season in the senior circuit, both at World Cup 1, where they finished fifth, and then World Cup 2 in Lucerne, where they took 10th. So good experience from that shell, but no doubt about it, Jan, it's looking like Romania and Belarus uh, want to advance straight. Exactly, as you say, Colin, those two crews look quite relaxed, especially the Belarus crew, having right now almost two boats ahead of the third Swiss crew. So it seems that the that Belarus and Romania will hold their position and be, go directly to the semi-final A, B. That's right. And now just closing in on the final 500 meters or so, we can see in our picture on the far side, out of lane six, the boat from the USA. Uh, and then up at the front, a beautiful shot here then of the battle between uh, Romania out of lane three and Belarus out of lane two, just ever so close, these two crews. And of course, Jan, at this point, it's a bit, uh, you know, if they, they know that these two, two boats will advance, they both are well aware. As they come through the final 250, Rob, it's a bit of pride on the the line isn't it as to who will cross first they're both advancing uh, but it's up to them absolutely you want to put down a marker don't you you want the other crews to be aware of just what you're capable of and so this battle for first and second while they're both surely going to qualify directly for that semi-final it's who's going to get the upper hand as they head down towards the finish line here Čtyřka bez kormidelníka a v tuto chvíli tedy vidíme opět souboj o semifinále o první a druhé místo. Ten souboj, který nebude tak napínavý, protože první a druhé místo je v tuto chvíli poměrně jasně ložené. Vidíme Rumony, kteří jedou výborným způsobem a moc se daří také závodníkům reprezentující Bělorusko, tedy první a druhá postupová pozice. Well, it's going to be Romania who take first place with a really good extra push towards the line. A length and a quarter there for Romania ahead of Belarus in second place. But both those crews grow directly through to the AB semi-final. Coming home in lane one, then it's uh, Switzerland. And they and the Romanian crews will have another chance to get through to that semi-final when they contest the repercharge. Ještě jednou tedy potvrzujeme postup posádky z Rumunsko a z Běloruska z první a druhé pozice. Švýcaři, kteří skončili na třetím místě, už musí stejně jako ostatní posádky do oprav. Underway then in heat two of three of the men's four. Nearest the camera, it's Canada in lane one with the Czech Republic, the home nation, alongside them in lane two. Next to them in lane three is Hungary with Russia in four, Ireland in lane five, Italy out there in lane six. And I wonder how closely this one is going to be contested. If we're going to see a very close uh, run for first and second here, some pretty high rates in these early stages, Colleen. Yeah, uh, exactly, Rob. And of course, this is a very popular event, the, uh, the men's four, certainly at the senior level um, and of course at the under 23 level as well so great depth in this field a lot of talent and so I think we can expect an exciting race uh, which is of course exactly what we saw out of heat one a nice overhead look closest to us in the picture then that's Canada out of lane one making the most of it as they move into the second half na dráze číslo dvě sledujeme českou posádku, která aktuálně je na čtvrté pozici a nevede si vůbec špatně v, tom, v tomto porovnání tohoto pole, kde na prvním místě je loď z Kanady, na druhém místě loď z Irska. So the boat from, from the Canada right now in the first position, battling for the position with the Ireland. Look at the Canada, how long and easy stroke they looks. 
Yeah, that's right. They have a nice, long, powerful stroke, don't they, as they come through 750 meters to go. So indeed, it's Canada leading, but on the far side, uh, we can see the green unisuits and green blades of Ireland out of lane five. Uh, same combination that rode at World Cup two in Lucerne, where they finished ninth. Uh, so some good senior circuit talent amongst this crew. And of course, Jan, as we've chatted earlier, the Irish love to sprint. So it's two to advance. Can the Canadians are holding it, but will we see a sprint from the Irish? I hope that we will see for as, as in the former heat, the battle for the first position to have a pride and maybe the battle po better position in the upcoming races, especially the semi-final. It's always better to finish on the, in the first position because then you are favorite in the upcoming races. Yeah, that's absolutely right. There is an advantage for sure, just sort of psychologically to come in first, uh, but then, of course, more tactically for the lane assignments in the next round. So Canada holding on to that position, then it's Ireland still holding on to the coveted second place position. As we know, two to advance to semi-final A, B, so a lot on the line uh, because neither of these crews right want to race in the repechage. We see Canada kicks it up a beat or two with the stroke rate to maintain that position perhaps they know as well that uh, the Irish might have a sprint in them uh, and then it's about one boat length back to the Irish so just a nice shot there that is John Kearney in the stroke seat it's Ross Corrigan in three seat Alex Byrne in the two and Jack Dorney in bow Rob it's 250 meters to go and it's looking like we know exactly who will advance in this race barring any major upsets absolutely yes Canada and Ireland really uh, looking the bee's knees here aren't they with uh, a challenge still there from Russia but possibly a little too far behind with them uh, Italy, the Czech Republic and then uh, Hungary bringing up the rear. Fantastický souboj o první a druhé místo. Obě dvě místa zajišťují postup do semifinále. Čtyřky bez kormidelníka ve druhé rozjíždce. Ve hře je také česká posádka, která je aktuálně na páté pozici po 1500 a 500 metrech. Teď už se dostáváme ale do cílové rovinky a Kanaďané to mají rozjeté na první místo. Yeah, it's Canada who are going to cross the line in first place. That's a terrific finish from them. They just take it by a length and a bit ahead of uh, Ireland in second. So those are the two crews who go directly through to the AB semi-final. Out in lane six, et Italy coming home in third place with Russia in fourth. All the crews coming through in pretty quick succession here. Czech Republic uh, coming home as well now uh, ahead of uh, the Hungarians in lane three. Z této rozjížky tedy automatický postup díky svému výkonu Kanaďané z prvního a Irové ze druhého místa. Všichni ostatní, včetně čtveřice českých reprezentantů mistrovství světa kategorie do 23 let, půjdou v této kategorii, tedy čtyřky bez kormidelníka, do oprav. Third heat of three is underway then in the men's four with Great Britain in lane one. It's the Netherlands in lane two, Spain in lane three. In lane four, it's Germany with Greece in lane five. And we saw in that previous heat a really closely contested. There wasn't much in it between first and final place. And again, a really quick stroke rate uh, off the start here, Colleen. Yeah, Rob, just a nice look then at the overhead shot as these crews move through the first, uh, rather the second quarter of the race. Uh, and a good look for both uh, Germany, of course, and then Great Britain, Great Britain out of lane one. Uh, some some of these athletes, of course, making their international debut in the Great Britain shell, uh, the bow seat, Daniel Graham making his international debut, Matthew Rowe uh, rowing two seat. We've only seen him once thus far this season where he finished fifth in World Cup three in the mid and the men's four. Uh, Great Britain with a lot of history in this event as they cross into the second half. Sledujeme po druhou polovinu poslední rozjížky čtyřech mužů a nás především zajímá, které posádky půjdou také do oprav s naší, pos s naší posádkou, která skončila v předešlé jízdě na pátém místě a budou muset tedy v opravných jízdách bojovat o postup do semifinále. 
And a beautiful look then as they move through the third quarter, that Great Britain shell stroked by Ewan Hadfield, uh, Henry uh, Blois Brook in the three seat. A lot of power, some good swing. The Germans staying right on them, though. We can see just about one length or so separation. Now coming in with about 750 meters to go. Great Britain keeping the stroke rate nice and high, so doing it with power and swing and keeping the beat uh, just a, a bit high to make sure they solidify that first place position. It's looking good for Germany. It's looking like they're safe at the moment, uh, but they will have to keep an eye on the crews just behind them. Uh, not too much of a comfortable lead, Jan, as we come through this final stretch. Yeah, as you have said, Colin, really nice, typical British power we see from the British crew. Really a lot of power per stroke, stroking probably a little bit lower than the other crews. Now we can see this crew in a detail, really long stroke, a lot of power during every stroke. Currently in the second position is a Germany crew, which is one boat length behind the Great Britain. So not, not really close, close race as we have seen in the before heats. Yeah, and perhaps, uh, you know, with the last, the final 500 meters to go and Great Britain still holding that lead, perhaps not surprising, as we mentioned, good pedigree in that boat. Uh, the stroke seat, Ewan Hadfield, member of Leander Club, uh, previously uh, secured a scholarship to the University of California, Berkeley, which is one of the leading universities for, for rowing in the U.S. Um, he took bronze for Great Britain in the junior men's eight in 2019. So good, good pedigree and that rhythm really working for them now as they move through this final stretch. It's Great Britain. They've opened up their lead, haven't they, Jan, over uh, Germany. And we are moving closely to the last 250 meters. How you see it from the tower, Rob? Yeah, pretty much the same as you guys. It's looking very solid from Great Britain all the way down the course. Uh, they've led uh, from the very start and they're looking very comfortable, very powerful. And as you say, it's not a matter of uh, a high rate at all. It's just uh, stroking strong and they're making good progress down to the finish line. V první dráze to jsou závodníci, kteří reprezentují Velkou Británii a ukazují svoji extra třídu. V tuto chvíli už si budou chtít rozhodně pohlídat také první pozici, která znamená postup do semifinále, možná větší souboj o druhé a třetí místo na posledním mezičase Německo versus závodníci, kteří reprezentují Řecko, ale Němci jedou skvěle a drží druhou pozici. Great Britain who crossed the line in first place, uh, length and a quarter ahead of Germany in second. They're happy enough with that one. Uh, Greece come through just behind in third place. So just missing out on that direct qualification for the AB semi-final uh, with Spain in third. And uh, just a little bit further back, uh, yet to finish in the course is the Netherlands. So those uh, other crews then will uh, have another go in the repechage. Dvě desetiny pod hranici 6 minut tak zvládli 2000 metrů Britové, kteří postoupili do semifinále právě ve třetí rozjížce této čtyřky. Na druhém místě a další postup německá čtveřice nakonec zaostali o dvě vteřiny a čtyři desetiny za postupem ti, kteří reprezentují Řecko. Na čtvrtém místě Španělé, nizozemci jako pátí. So, ladies and gentlemen, after about an hour and a half of non-stop action, there's just a, a short pause now before our next heat, which will be in the lightweight men's single skulls, getting underway in about seven minutes from now at 16.35 local time. Po první části odpoledního prvního dne 
světového šampionátu v kategorii do 23 let v České republice v Račicích a to konkrétně nejlepší veslaři a veslařky, které se potkali právě na tomto místě. Máme několika minutovou pauzu, vracíme se ale opět na startovní linii a to už za 7 minut. Konkrétní start 16 hodin a 35 minut.
Well, we're underway once again, ladies and gentlemen, on day one of these 2021 World Rowing Under-23 Championships from Rachitse in the Czech Republic. Vracíme se zpátky k závodníkům, kteří tady budou bojovat a to konkrétně v tuto chvíli ve skifu mužů lehkých vach. Jdeme si pro první rozjížku, kterou můžeme vidět v akci. Za malou chvíli budou mít závodníci prvních 250 metrů. So this is heat one of the lightweight men's single skulls with Max von Bülow of Germany in lane one. In lane two, Anis Odinaev of Uzbekistan. In lane three, Sandro Gardella Bozzo of Peru. In lane four, representing Brazil, Pedro Tuchenhagen. And in lane five from Serbia, Andrea Sumunovic. So they are on their way down the course, looking for a semi-final spot. First two across the line will get that one. And Colleen has joined Jan to cover this one. Thank you very much, Rob. Yes, so uh, taking a look then at the first 500 meter mark or so, uh, it is a good look for Max van Bulow of Germany. Uh, he's out holding the lead, but definitely being challenged uh, by Pedro Tutenhagen from Brazil. That's out of lane four, and you can just see a beautiful shot here of these two athletes ever so close. And in fact, Max van Bulow of Germany just looking over his shoulder, uh, of course, uh, keeping an eye then on the rest of the field as well. Oh, that's Peru, Serbia, Uzbekistan, but a good start, Jan, for Max van Bulow. Yeah, definitely the German Max Bulow at the front from the beginning. But look more on the Brazilian Tuchtenhagen. I would guess this guy will slowly increase his lead or for, uh, compared to the German guy. The German scholar looks more effort, but the sculling from the Brazilian Tuchtenhagen looks like so easy and effortless. Yeah, he's got a nice rhythm there, hasn't he, as he starts to press uh, just ever so slightly toward our leader, Max Van Bulow. Uh, Max, though, able to hold it again, just a beautiful shot there of the full field. This is a tightly packed one, Jan. Yeah, really tight. Sledujeme první rozjížku mužů lehkých vach. Všichni závodníci mají váhu 72,5 kilo. Na prvních pozicích je právě dvojce Německa a Brazíle, který s každým tempem ujíždí v ostatním posádkám a jsou právě na první a druhé pozici, což by pro ně znamenalo přímý postup do semifinálové jízdy o finále A a B. And less than 750 meters to go for the first time, the Brazilian scholar Pedro Tutenhagen puts his bow ahead of the German scholar, that's Max von Bulow. Those two are holding first and second. They'll have to look out, though, for a charging Peru, that's Sandro Gradello Bozo from Peru out of lane three, making it known that he wants to go. Jan, the question becomes, will the Peruvian scholar be able to catch these two leaders in the last quarter of the race? We'll see in a, in the second half of the race, actually. But uh, the look at the Brazilian. It seems like he has pushed right now a bit more to move from the Chilean scholar. But we'll see how it will develop in the second half. Right now, they moving in the first position. The German scholar in the second position. The Brazilian one. Yeah, that's right. Max von Bülow then of Germany. He's first across into the second half. Uh, so we saw the Brazilian scholar Pedro Tutenhagen able to get ahead of him just barely in the second quarter of the race, but into the second half. And now, in fact, uh, as we have a look, just a great shot here of these two trading that first place position stroke by stroke. Slight advantage to the German scholar. But again, this battle happening at the front, uh, the Peruvian scholar, that's Gardella Bozo, not to be left behind, doing everything he can to get get his bow in, uh, not quite closing on these two leaders, still advantage to Germany. Yeah, look at the different styles of the Brazilian scholar and the German one. Brazilian are having a bit, uh, be, be bigger lean in the stroke. The German one is a bit more straight with his, uh, with his back and working more with his legs. Yeah, that's right. And that leg power uh, holding that first place position for him as he moves through the third quarter of the race. That's Max von Vulo. We haven't seen him on the international stage since 2018, where he was in the junior men's four. So he's moved over to the sculling events. Uh, he's doing a great job in the third quarter of just 
ever so slightly holding off the Brazilian scholar Tutenhagen. As we know, it is only two to advance to semifinal A, so quite a race underway. Does Peru, that Sandro Gardelo Boza, does it have he have it in him to overtake either of these two? So exciting, Jan, as we close into the final bit. Yeah, what an ex ex exciting race. Nothing, nothing really changes during, during the last 1,000 meters, and we are moving in the last 500 still in the first position, Brazilian and the German scholar, and in the third position right now, the Peruvian Gardela Bosso Sandro. We'll see if he will, he will try to move a bit for, for, to get on the second position, which would mean that he would qualify directly to the semi-final. You can see starting few charges from all scholars right now. Yeah, the Peruvian scholar Gardella Bozo doing absolutely everything in his power. And he's just so close to these two leaders. That's Max von Bulow of Germany and uh, Pedro Tuttenhagen from Brazil. So, so tightly packed as they approach the final 250 meters. Rob, this will be a fun one for you to call. You better get out your binoculars. And in fact, I see that you have. <laughs> what is going to happen in these final 250? It's two to qualify with three crews almost level. Thank you very much. Much, Colleen. Yeah, the binoculars are never far away from my very bad eyes. But uh, yeah, coming down towards us now, it really is anyone's guess with the way this is going to go. This is very exciting uh, for the heats here of the lightweight men's uh, single skulls. Jsou to závodníci, kteří reprezentují Německo a Brazílii, kteří podle všeho pojedou o první a druhé místo, to znamená o postup konkrétně v této té disciplíně lehkých vach a tohle to jsou závodníci, kteří jedou v první rozjíčce po té krátké pauze. Je to ale hodně napínavé a vyrovnané, protože skvělým způsobem tam jede také závodník reprezentující Kanadu, tak tohle to je zhruba posledních 100, teď už 80 metrů. První dva postupují do semifinále, je hodně důležité být mezi dvěma nejlepšími. Pojďte se podívat na ten dramatický dojezd posledních desítek metrů. Yeah, it's looking really good for Peru's Bozzo Gardella. I think he's just going to do it. Oh, but the German is putting in a big charge. Max von Bülow is putting a huge charge at the finish. Too close for me to call by the naked eye. But they finished almost bow ball to bow ball. And the third place goes to Brazil. But it's Germany, uh, Germany and Peru who qualify for the AB semi-final spot. Quite which way round, I'm not sure yet, but we'll get that confirmed. V tuto chvíli můžeme potvrdit to, co jsme viděli na vlastní oči, minimální rozdíly a nakonec první a druhé místo pro zástupce Peru a také Německa. To jsou ti dva, kteří postupují z první rozjížky do semifinále. Na třetím místě je pak Brazilec, který nakonec ztratil až v závěrečné části této rozjížky číslo jedna lehkých vach. So let's get confirmation then. It did indeed go the way of Sandro uh, Gabea. Um, so I've just done my page. Gabea Bozzo of Peru, just pipping Max von Bülow of Germany into that uh, first spot. But uh, both progress through to the AB semi final. Potvrzujeme tedy závodníky z Peru a Německa, co by postupující do semifinále z rozlišky číslo jedna. Teď už je to definitivně potvrzené. So on to the second heat then with the Czech Republic, Kazakhstan, Ireland, Italy and Denmark all contesting two more AB semi-final spots. Let's cross straight over to Colleen and see what we can expect from this one. Yeah, I expect that it'll be just ever so tight, as we saw uh, certainly in the first heat and as it so often is in these lightweight events. That's part of what makes them so exciting. Uh, so this is a look then at our leader, the Italian scholar, that's Niles Tor. Perhaps not surprising to see him out in front. He has great pedigree. He won the lightweight men's single uh, at both World Cup 2 in Lucerne and World Cup 3. Uh, so some good racing under his belt. He was also in the lightweight men's single that won the Eastern, uh, excuse me, the European Championships in 2021. Uh, so gaining speed, gaining momentum throughout the season and just a nice lead over the field, 7.50 to go. Sledujeme druhou rozjížku mužů lehkých vach, skifů mužů lehkých vach, kde zatím na třetí pozici je český reprezentant Jonáš Friedrich, který aktuálně drží třetí pozici, není, není příliš vzdálen té postupové do, přímo do semifinále, což by znamenalo, že by se měl dostat na druhé místo. Pro, I pro ně je to pr, premiéra na mistrovství světa. Zatím má zkušenosti jenom 
z mistrovství Evropy a na břehu ho určitě zatím podporuje trenér Oldřich Hejdušek. Zatím ale vidíme na prvním místě italského veslaře, který už má mnoho zkušeností i ze seniorských kategorií, například má zlatou medaili z mistrovství Evropy letošního. And Niles Torre holding about a 32, uh, so not quite the lowest stroke rate of the field. That is Kazakhstan uh, Sultan Al Shali rowing at about 30 strokes per minute. But he does, the Italian scholar, just look nice and long and powerful. Uh, it's now moving into the final, less than 500 meters to go. He's holding that position. As we know, it's two to qualify. So who's a contender for that coveted second position? Well, it continues to be Ireland, but Ireland threatened by Denmark, that's uh, Rasmus Lind of Denmark, right on his tail. Yeah, definitely Neil Storey is going to stay in the first position, but we we are looking for, for on the fight for the second position right now between the Denmark, Lind, Rasmussen and Ireland. Huck, more pretty, pretty tight race right now between those two almost neck and neck and we are slow, slowly moving in the last 250 meters how you see it from, from the tower up yeah it's um, certainly shaping up to be another very interesting heat here in this uh, second heat of the lightweight men's single scars let me just correct one mistake i made in lane two it's saudi arabia sultan ashali but uh, let's get the uh, latest ideas as well from mira alongside me Ital Tore Niels dokázal vyhrát letos dva závody světového poháru. Na výzloňské sezóně byl stříbrný na mistrovství Evropy a zatím si drží suverénně první postupovou pozici. Postupují opět dva závodníci i z této rozjížky číslo dvě. Velmi dobře byl na tom Jonáš Fridrich, který na světovém poháru číslo tři letošního roku skončil na jedenáctém místě. Zatím to ale vypadá, že závodníci, kteří v tuto chvíli bojují na ostatních drahách, budou rychlejší. Pojďme se podívat na ten těsný dojezd. Tak nakonec Ital na první pozici. Jak to bude vypadat na druhém místě? Yeah, it's the Italian who comes through in first place ahead of Denmark, uh, Rasmus Lind in second and uh, in third place in lane three. It's Hugh Moore from Ireland. So uh, a good finish from all three, but it's just the first two who will go through to the AB semi-final. Neil Storen na první pozici, Dan Rasmus Lind na druhém místě, to je postupová dvojice. Hakmur z Irska na třetím místě a stejně jako Čech Jonáš Friedrich i závodník reprezentující svou zemi v dráze číslo dvě, to jsou ti, kteří musí do oprav z této rozíšky. So to heat three then of the lightweight men's single skulls, five more crews contesting those two direct AB semi-final berths with Azerbaijan in lane one. It's Mexico in lane two with Bulgaria in lane three. Alongside them in lane four is Estonia with the USA in lane five. And speaking of the USA... Colleen. Thank you very much, Rob. Uh, the USA not quite running first, although they did certainly have a first, uh, a good first quarter of the race. Uh, it's Bulgaria. Our Bulgarian fans will be happy to know that Lazar Panev uh, is running first uh, and uh, finished, uh, got to the, the 500 meter mark, that first check, checkpoint first as well. Then it's over to Estonia running second, and then the USA uh, running third, then over to Azerbaijan, followed by Mexico as they now move into the second half. Třetí rozjížka mužů lehkých chvách, skifů mužů lehkých chvách. Aktuálně na prvním místě bulharský skifař Lazar Panev. Zatím na, a zatím za ním v lehkém závěsu estonský Lut Elar, který ztrácí zhruba jednu loď na vedoucího bulharského skifaře. Nicméně estonský skifař právě musí odrážet útok skifaře ze Spojených států amerických, který se pomalu probojová na, na druhou pozici. So the USA's color is moving on a second position right now. Yeah, Colin. 
Yeah, the USA scholar indeed. That's uh, Nicholas Ar Aro now. Uh, he rose at Princeton University and he won the youth single at the 2019 head at the Charles. Uh, he set a course record there. So great experience in the single for him. Uh, and he's making his move now as we close in toward the last quarter of the race. So that means that our Bulgarian scholar Lazar Panev still holding that first place position. But it is the USA now in a qualifying position two to advance to semi A B. Yeah, USA right now the fastest moving boat at the course. We'll see if he he will also can also ch challenge the Bulgarian scholar, the Penef Lazar. Blížíme se do poslední pětistovky a aktuálně na druhém místě si upevně svou pozici americký skifař a uvidíme, jestli bulharský skifař Penef Lazar bude muset odrážet útok amerického skifaře. Less than 500 meters to go. It continues to be Lazar Panev from Bulgaria holding that first place position. The USA solidifying that second place position we can see on the picture. That's bow number five, Nicholas Aronau, uh, holding on to that second place position with less than 500 meters to go. Top two are exactly where you want to be. And it looks like uh, Estonia, Alar Lut, uh, currently out of lane four, perhaps a little bit off the pace and losing that, uh, that possibility of taking one of the top two spots so a beautiful shot then as we take a look at our top two leaders in heat number three of the under 23 lightweight men's single rob will hand it over to you it's looking like we've got two clear winners with 250 to go two clear contestants yeah it does indeed it looks like uh, it's good going for arana of the usa and uh, penev of bulgaria uh, lr loot certainly put up a good challenge for the bulk of this race but i think he's just dropped too far back now to be a contender for that direct qualification spot for the AB semi-final. Lazar Penev a to je závodník z Bulharska si naprosto neohroženě jede ve třetí dráze pro postu, protože na posledním mezičase měl náskok tři vteřiny před americkým skifařem lehkých vach. Tohle to je rozíška číslo tři. Opět platí, že první dva postupují do semifinále. Ostatní závodníci musí do oprav, takže už můžou trochu taktizovat. Strategie je také důležitá tak, aby nevyčerpali jakýkoliv rezervuál sil navíc. Pokud se podíváme právě na opravy, které jsou nedílnou součástí těch, kteří skončí na třetím, čtvrtém a pátém místě. Lazar Penev a Američan Nikolas Aronov zatím první a druhé místo. Tohle to budou ti dva, kteří postoupí do semifinále skifu mužů lehkých vach. Yeah, it's a terrific finish from uh, Liva Penev of Bulgaria crossing the line in uh, first place. Uh, Two boat lengths uh, between him and Aronau of the USA, but those are the two crews who progress directly to the AB semi-final. Uh, the other three crews will have another chance to progress when they recontest the repechage. Papíroví favorité tedy splnili to, co se od nich očekávalo. Lazar Penev z Bulharsko, Nikolas Aronov, Spojené státy. První a druhé místo rozdíl mezi nimi čtyři vteřiny a dvě desetiny. Jistě v tuto chvíli už je na proformu na třetím místě Estonec. To je závodník, který postupuje s dalšími do oprav. Tedy má ještě šanci na mistrovství světa kategorie do 23 let. So to the fourth and final heat then of the lightweight men's single skulls underway at the start with Pedro Jose Kirk Dixon of Argentina in lane one, Joseph Wilbur of Panama in lane two. From Greece in lane three, Antonios Papakonstantinou in lane four. From Switzerland, Jan Schaubler. And uh, from Tunisia in lane five, it's Geit Kadri. And uh, it really is looking beautiful on the uh, water there in this early evening sunlight. How are the crews enjoying it, do you think, Colleen? Uh, I think that Greece is having the best time out on the course right now. That's Antonio's Papa Constantinou, uh, currently with a very solid lead over the rest of the field. Uh, just behind him, though, quite the battle happening between Argentina and Switzerland. Argentina out of lane one, that sticks in, and out of lane four, Jan Schuobel. Uh, currently, advantage to Switzerland. 
Switzerland, as we know and as we've seen uh, with the, the last several heats, it's two to adv advance. Uh, so oftentimes, you know, if you get a, a clear leader out, there'll be a real battle just happening behind them uh, to make sure that, uh, you know, you, you can grab that second place position if it's in reach. We're now 12.50 down, which means it's 7.50 to go. And it looks like Switzerland really starting to assert themselves, Jan. Slunečné počasí se nám tady objevuje pomalu na závodišti a aktuálně na prvním místě jíme řeckého skifaře Papa, Papa, Papa Konstantinuse, který vede s výrazným náskokem nad druhým švýcarským veslařem, který má už mnoho zkušeností také z, z závodí v kategorii mužů lehkých vah a jedná se tedy o zkušeného závodníka, který by měl být rozně tím druhým, který se, který se postoupí do bojů o finále A a finále B v semifinále. And Papa Constantinou of Greece still out ahead as he moves through that final 500 meter marker. Uh, he took seventh in the men's dump double at the final Olympic qualifying regatta. Previously, he's rode the pair. He switched to the double. Um, so great to see him in this sculling boat and making a name for himself as he moves through the final 500 meters. Greece leads, Switzerland running second. Right now, the last 500 meters mark is crossing the Tunisian Kadri Kaiti. But look, look at the first position. Look how the smooth this guy goes. Really easy and long stroke. Pretty nice calling, yeah, Colin? Yeah, he's got a great stroke, doesn't he? So a lot of good reach up at the front, and then we just see a really nice swing, uh, solid leg drive after he's connected up at the front. Um, and he's rowing it quite long, so he's at about 33 strokes per minute as he approaches the final 250 meters. Rob, do you think he's going to bring up the stroke rate or just cruise exactly where he is? <laughs> How do I know? Let's, well, we could find out by just maybe counting or having a look at the uh, the information screen in front of us. But uh, I don't think he's going to go pick it up too much more because you say he's got very long stroke and it seems to be doing him well. He's not really facing a strong challenge at this stage. It looks like him and Schabler from uh, Austria are probably going to be the two boats who qualify directly for those semifinals. Like Řecka a Švýcarka jsou zatím vidět nejvýše, to znamená, že tyhle ty dvě země budou mít své zástupce také v další části skifu mužů ve čtvrté rozjíždce, kterou teď můžeme sledovat. Závodníci, kteří skončili také v minulých závodech hodně vysoko, pokud se podíváme na řeka, tak ten je loňský čtvrtý muž mistrovství Evropy a v tuto chvíli si suverénně jede pro postup z prvního místa. Well, he's come home in a terrific uh, lead for Papa Constantinou of Greece. He's won by, oh, I can't even count the number of boat lengths uh, between him and Schaubler in second place. But Schaubler is being challenged. He had to keep his eye open from uh, Argentina's Dixon in lane one, who really made a push. And Schaubler was just cruising to the finish line, very nearly missed out on that second automatic qualification spot for those AB semifinals. But it's uh, the Swiss and the Greek who go through. Máme k dispozici oficiální výsledky. Antonius Papa Konstantiou, to je závodník reprezentující Řecko, už jsem připomínal, loni čtvrtý na mistrovství Evropy, postupuje z prvního místa za 6.56.31. Na druhém místě Jan Schauble, závodník reprezentující Švýcarsko. Co se týká ostatních borců, kteří skončili na třetím až pátém místě, ty musí do oprav. Tuto chvíli tedy Řecko, Švýcarsko, rozíška číslo čtyři, skif, lehkých vah a postup do semifinále. Well, we're into our final boat class for this first day, but it's a big one. 29 separate crews contesting five heats here in the men's single skulls. It's always a huge entry, this one. So underway in heat one is uh, Denmark in lane one and Norway in lane two, Cyprus in three, Germany in lane four, Paraguay in five, and Estonia in lane six. A lot of names to get through here. Uh, Colleen, how do you say? Oh, no, it's Kat now uh, alongside you. Jan, uh, for this one. Kat, you've got your work cut out here. Yeah, Rob, I think I have, and it's great to be back in the commentary seat again. So here on the screen, if you're watching this at home on the live stream, we're seeing the scholar in lane number four. It's the German Jonas Gelsen out there in front, that classic yellow shell of the Empacker boat, the German boat. He's leading the way here. He's had a really uh, great second quarter of the race. It was his a uh, competitor from Paraguay who led the way through the first timing mark when Jonas Gelsen has come into the lead through the 1,000 meter mark, Jan. 
Aktuálně na závodišti můžeme sledovat skify mužů, tenkrát těžkých vah po lehkovážných, které, které jsme sledovali před chvílí. Celkem 29 posádek na závodí v tomto, v, te, v této disciplíně. Bohužel nemáme zde české zastoupení. Aktuálně na prvním místě této rozdížky je německý skifař, na druhém místě dánský reprezentant a první čtyři z této jízdy a z, i z následujících jízd postupují do čtvrtfinále. So the first four crews will qualify for the, for the quarterfinal. Right now it looks like the German is quite comfortable in the lead together with the Denmark in the second place. I totally agree, Jan. It looks great for these two scholars up at the front, for the German and the Dane, Bastian Secker here. You see them on the screen in front of you. And with two more qualifying places up for grabs, it's pretty tight between the four remaining scholars at the back of the field. So this shot lets you see um, clearly that we're going to have a bit of a battle on our hands in this last part of the race to determine who these four scholars will be who directly qualify for the quarterfinal. And that quarterfinal is on Friday. Tomorrow will be the repercharge for the fifth and sixth place scholars in this race. So we see the battle for the fourth position that will qualify for the quarterfinal. Right now it is between the Norway, Norway scholar and the scholar from the Kypros that just moved, just went in the last 500 meters to go. Now we see the de detail of the German scholar. It kind of reminds me of Ole Sadler with a pr pretty short stroke, it's, as you can see. Yeah, I agree with you there, Jan. The, the shins at the front of the stroke, the shins don't quite come to vertical and um, he's making the most of his length using that sort of looseness around the front end. But it is, it's a compact stroke, but it's moving him well here at the head of the field. And he's still got that advantage over the Danish scholar. Um, in uh, lane one and we see in the top of the picture there the boat with the number six that's the Estonian uh, Mikhail Kushtein also looking to be in a good position for one of these qualifying spots for the spots for the quarterfinal Jan. Yeah we are in the last 250 meters so how it looks from the tower Rob. Well, it's the battle for uh, third and fourth that looks uh, a pretty tight one as well, which would be those uh, last two quarterfinal spots. But uh, it, right now, it's uh, looking a fairly strong uh, finish, I think, as you said, for uh, Gelsen of uh, Germany and Sekša of uh, Denmark for the first and second spots. O čtyři postupová místa tedy postupuje závodníci, kteří v tuto chvíli bojují o čtvrtfinále na první pozici. Jonas Gelsen, který naprosto suverénně ze čtvrté Lajny jde do čtvrtfinále, co by první závodník z kifu mužů. My ale sledujeme další souboje o třetí čtvrté místo. Tady to bude pravděpodobně nejtěsnější, protože tady sledujeme další výborné výkony a počkáme si na oficiální výsledky. Yeah, well, that's a really close uh, closing there with uh, Cyprus at the end there. I think we'll wait for the uh, final result before I make any big mistakes. We'll wait for confirmation to see uh, how that third and fourth placing went and who the final qualifiers were for the uh, quarterfinals in this uh, men's single skulls. Skifaři reprezentující Německo, Dánsko, Kypr a Norsko potvrzeně na prvním, druhém, třetím a čtvrtém místě. Co se týká Estonce, Michalia Kušteva na páté pozici, ten bude muset stejně jako závodníci, kteří vždy skončí na pátém, šestém místě do oprav. I can confirm Gelson of Germany in first place, Sasha of Denmark in second with uh, Nikita of Cyprus in third and that fourth qualifying sp spot went to we of Norway. But uh, great to see such a close competition here in these heats. So to heat two of the men's single skulls, we've got Belgium in lane one, Uruguay taking up lane two alongside Poland in lane three, Ukraine in four, it's the Ivory Coast in lane five, Ricardo Bui for the Ivory Coast there, and Moldova in lane six. Uh, there's a lot to look at here with the uh, first four crews getting through to that quarterfinal automatically, Kat. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot to look at here and it's a spread out race 
already. So here we're up at the front of the field, at the top of the picture there. That's Piotr Plominski from Poland. He's had a great row so far. He led to the 500 metres, he led to the 1,000 metres, taking these timing markers ahead of the rest of the field. And he continues to lead ahead by about half a length of the Belgian scholar Tristan van der Boucher in the yellow boat there at the bottom of the picture. Druhé rozíše se skifu mužů může vidět na prvních pozicích Poláka, Polominského Piotra, který aktuálně drží první pozici, ale na pomalu se k němu přibližuje belgický skifař, který má mnoho zkušeností z juniorských let. V roce 2019 získal stříbrnou medaili ze skifu junioru a aktuálně vypadá stále velmi silně a přichá, pomalu se dostává na první pozici v druhé rozíce mužů skifu. So right now the Belgian scholar is moving in the first position and but the Polish is trying to stay with him. He doesn't want to give it for free. Yeah, he certainly doesn't. We just saw him look over to his right there, Peter Polominski uh, from Poland. He's looking over to see what the Belgians doing and responding to it. So let's have a look at the ratings. Peter Polominski from Poland, 34 strokes a minute, 33 strokes a minute. His Belgian rival up at 35 strokes a minute. And that just little bit higher rating from the Belgian is now just starting to push him ahead of the Polish scholar as they come through 1500 meters. So a lot of clear water separating those two back to the third place scholar. Yeah, a little bit higher rating Belgian, but still I think he looks quite relaxed on his on his tempo. But um, seems like still it is better for the positions to have a better lane in the upcoming races which is quarterfinal in which four crews will qualify from this race. Yeah, through the 1500 meters, four crews to go through to the quarterfinal. Peter Pleminski and Tristan van den Boucher up there in front with the Belgian leading the pole now. It looks good for those two. Here we're riding with the Belgian sky. He's got clear water now over Peter Pleminski. So a great push from him in the last part of the race. Coming into the final stages, Rob. Yeah, he's making sure of this one, isn't he, the Belgian? And uh, he's going to make this one his own if he uh, keeps going like this. But uh, it's another closely contested heat, this, with the for the other placings. Poměrně jistě se nám tady v tuto chvíli oddělili ti, kteří budou postupovat do čtvrtfinále skifu mužů. Rozíška číslo dvě nabízí jak belgický skvělý výkon, tak také výkon Pětro Plominského z Polska. To jsou závodníci, které dělil na 15 stovce jen kousek, tedy konkrétně jedna vteřina a to navíc necela. Závodníci, kteří byli také mezi nejlepšími ve světových pohárech v letošní sezóně a právě teď je můžeme vidět, co by ty, kteří dojedou na první a druhé pozici. Nic to ale nemění na tom, že sledujeme také třetí a čtvrté místo, protože i v rozíšce číslo dvě postoupí čtyři nejrychlejší skifaři do čtvrtfinále mistrovství světa kategorie do 23 let. Yes, Plominski of Poland coming home in first place, a length and a half ahead uh, of his, uh, sorry, that was Belgium's van der Boucher, I beg your pardon, in first place, ahead of Plominski of Poland uh, in second. Third place has gone to uh, Uruguay's Zocalo, and the fourth qualification spot is uh, Moldova's Kursanov over in lane six. Potvrzení výsledků, které se za několik okamžiků objeví také na výsledkové tabuli, mezi tím, co počkáme na dojezd úplně všech kompletní šestice, super nabitá konkurence mistrovství světa kategorie do 23 let ve veslování v Račicích v České republice. Rozjetí výbornými výkony, jak v prvním, tak také druhém, v souboji rozjížděk, Belgičan na prvním, Polák na druhém a ještě si počkejme společně na třetí a čtvrté místo. Heat three of the under-23 men's single skulls. Uh, Burotaran of Spain taking up lane one, ahead of Brazil's uh, Thomas Levy. Then in lane three for Slovenia, Filip Matej Pfeiffer. Croatia's uh, Mahmutovic in lane four. For Hungary's Shalenka in lane five. And Schulter of Switzerland in lane six. Kat, it's yours in this, it's becoming a really lovely late afternoon, sunny summer's evening here. 
Yeah, Rob, I just can't agree with you more. The conditions have changed so much today. This morning during the practice time, it was really raining quite hard and there was a bit of a headwind on the course. That rain disappeared, the clouds have lifted. We've had a bit of a tailwind for a while, but the wind's pretty much dropped now. So these scholars have got beautiful conditions here. You see the water's so flat, a little bit of sunshine. And it's really moving well here for this Brazilian scholar. It's Thomas Levy there at the front of the course. And uh, closest to him is the Hungarian Ben Lenka. And just back from that is Philip Matteo Pfeiffer. These three in the lead with four to go through to the quarterfinal. It's also looking good for the Swiss, Luis Schulter. Zbývá nám zhruba 750 metrů do cíle třetí rozíšky. A aktuálně na postupových pozicích to vypadá pro skifaře z Brazílie, Slovenska, Chorvatska a také skifař z Švýcarska je na postupové pozici. Zatím na první pozici je brazilský skifař a na druhé pozici aktuálně maďarský šklenka Benče. Thomas Levy of Brazil leading the way still. He just had a little look to his left. He wanted to see where the Hungarian scholar is positioned, how he's doing along relative to his rival. And he's got half a length advantage coming into the last 500 meters here. So we see uh, the five boats here at the head of this race with four to go through. It looks like there's a pretty good dividing line now separating the four qualifiers from possibly the non-qualifier with 500 meters to go. Yeah, it is nice to see the battle for the positions. The Brazilian definitely wants to stay in the front of this race and end up in the, in the first position. Currently on the second, the Hungarian probably wants to also be in the, in the first position so he can have some advantage in upcoming races to have a better positions for upcoming races. Yeah, the win here would certainly give him the better lane draw for the uh, future rounds. So the Hungarian scholar just keeping his position there in second. And if he gets the chance, then it would be a great strategy for him to push for that first place. So that's the one too from uh, Thomas Levy of Brazil and uh, Ben Lenka of Hungary with 250 meters to go. It's looking good for these two scholars, Rob. Yes, it is. It's looking quite comfortable now, isn't it, uh, Kat? Certainly for Thomas Levy uh, from Brazil in first place. And then uh, Pfeiffer and Schilter um, look like they're going to probably take the third and fourth spots here. Brazilec Tomas Lívy zatím na první pozici, ale pokud se podíváme, tak už s běžným pohledem je vidět, že tohle je zatím nejnabitější a nejvíce vyrovnaná rozíška, konkrétně rozíška číslo 3 skifu mužů, kde ale platí stejná pravidla, to znamená první, druhé, třetí a čtvrté místo postupuje, závodníci na páté a šesté pozici musí do oprav tak, aby měli šanci v kategorii do 23 let na světovém šampionátu bojovat i ještě ve výsledku o medaile. Sledujeme také výborného Maďara, který zatím aktuálně podle všeho drží těsně. Well, it's not quite all over yet for first and second place, but I think it's a final spurt. He's seen the challenge, has uh, Thomas Levy of Brazil. The challenge coming across from the other side of the water, and it's still a tight one. Just a quarter of a length uh, between first and second place, Lenka of Hungary. Great to see so much effort being put into these finishing stages. A third place, Pfeiffer of Slovenia, and uh, in fourth place, uh, over in lane six, uh, Schulter of Switzerland. They're the four crews who will go through directly to the quarterfinal. Počkáme na potvrzení třetího a čtvrtého místa, ale nic se nezměnilo od poslední pětistovky, tak jak vypadaly na 1500 metrů jednotlivé mezičasy, tak se promítly také do celkových výsledků, tedy Brazílie, Maďarsko, Slovinsko, Švýcarsko. Zástupci těchto zemí postupují ze třetí rozíšky do čtvrtfinále mistrovství světa. Penultimate heat of the men's single skulls is underway with Gibo of Israel in lane one, Nikov of Bulgaria in lane two, Yanis uh, Timbors of uh, Latvia is in lane three with Uzbekistan's Davion Davronov in lane four. Stephen Rost takes up lane five for Canada with the Akulo Popelka of Slovakia in lane six. And a uh, nice little chevron on this side of the lake, Kerkat. Yeah, there's a chevron forming here as they come through the 1,000 metre mark, Rob. And up in the front here now, um, we've got the Bulgarian scholar Emil Nikov, along with the Canadian Stephen Ross. So 
These scholars both moving really well through the first part of the race. Here we see the Bulgarian in the yellow boat on the left of the picture. So Emil Nikov, the son of the legendary scholar Rumiana Nikova, and um, really coming from a high pedigree rowing family. His father was the coach of his mother, who's still the world record holder in the women's single scholar. It's the oldest world record in Olympic boat class. So Emil Nekov coming from wonderful rowing roots and he's really got a nice fluid style. He just accelerates that boat through the water and the extraction's so clean at the finish of the stroke. And that's taking him to a lead here with 750 meters to go. Zbývá nám 750 metrů do cíle čtvrté rozjížky skifu mužů. Aktuálně na prvním místě bulharský skifař Nejkov Emil, který má opravdu silné tempo, v každém tempu využívá hodně síly a vypadá to, že jede o trochu níž než jeho soupeři. Ale opakem je pravdou, jeden 34 aktuálně a druhý Kanaďan je aktuálně z frekvence na tom 33 temp za minutu. But we are moving in the last 500 meters of this race. Still the Bulgarian scholar at the first position. We can see really, really hard push from him in every stroke. Yeah, he's pushing so hard and that stroke rate, 33, 34 strokes a minute, it's not a super high rate, but he's just accelerating the boat with every stroke with that push through the water. And through 500 meters, we can see a move happening at the bottom of the picture there from the Israeli scholar Alon Gibor. And that's taken him up alongside the Canadian Stephen Ross for that second place. And again, from this heat in the men's single skulls, four boats to qualify directly for the quarterfinal on Friday. Yeah, right now we still see the leading guy, Bulgarian Nagov Emil, but we are quite surprised. But on, on back in back in the in, in the race, we see on a second position Canadian and Slovakian scholar also with the Israeli. Looks like those four will qualify for the quarterfinal, and the remaining will go in the repechage. Yeah, it looks really good for these four scholars. And here, Rob, we see the back of the Bulgarian Emil Nekov. It's looking good from him. Yeah, he's looking very comfortable, very confident, enjoying his time out here. He's pretty much got this one in the bag with about what, 200 meters now to go. Um, certainly with four places to go, he's not going to be falling out of that, <laughs> barring a total catastrophe. So, Bulgaria's uh, Emil Nekov uh, leading them home here. Pokud se nestane nic neočekávaného v posledních 180 metrech, tak by měl postoupit také za slovenské barvy Jakub Popelka. Zatím ale Bulhar Emil Nejkov je na tom suverénně nejlépe a platilo to na prvním, druhém a také třetím mezičase. Tohle je rozjížka číslo čtyři, tedy předposlední závod prvního dne mistrovství světa a poslední desítky metrů Emil Nejkov z Bulharska zatím na první pozici. So uh, Nekov of Bulgaria coming down to take uh, first spot. There is a battle for second place, and I think it's just going to go uh, the way of uh, Alon Gibor of Israel here in lane one, just uh, taking it by about uh, three quarters of a length ahead of Canada's Rosts in uh, lane five. And fourth place, the last direct qualification spot goes to Popoluk of Slovakia in lane six. Rozhodně nejde o to být na prvním nebo druhém místě. Důležité být mezi čtyřmi nejlepšími, protože právě čtyři se kvalifikují do čtvrtfinále a bude to tak platit také v poslední rozjíždce číslo pět prvního dne mistrovství světa. Emil Nejkov na prvním, Alon Gibor z Izraele na druhém, na třetí pozici Steven Roots a to je reprezentant z Kanady a postupuje také Jakub Popelka ze Slovenska. So the fifth and final heat of the men's single skulls is also the final race of day one of the 2021 World Rowing Under-23 Championships from Racice here in the northern part of the Czech Republic. So contesting this fifth heat and getting off to a rapid start, these crews, it's the USA in lane one, Italy in two, Romania lane three, Belarus in lane four, Portugal in lane five, just the last position here will not make it through uh, directly to the quarterfinals. Everyone else is safe. Kat. Yeah, Rob, it's a tragic progression system when there's just one boat's going to miss out on qualifying, but that's the way it is here. And coming through halfway, it's Yaheni Zalati for Belarus, who's in the lead. And here through the thousand meters, in that all-important 
place where none of these scholars want to be, that fifth place, is the Portuguese scholar Andre Pinto, but he's still in touch with the race. So four crews to qualify here directly. And we're riding with the Belarusian here, Jan. Aktuálně jsme v druhé polovině posledního závodu dnešního, dnešního dne a na prvním místě můžeme sledovat běloruského skifaře, který, na kterého zatím dojíždí americký skifař, legendovský William. Tyto dva skifaři mají poměrně slušný náskok nad, ost, nad zbylou trojcí. Pouze jeden z této pětice nebud, nepostoupí do čtvrtfinále té, tohoto závodu. So the Belarusian at the front of the race here, 32 strokes a minute here from him. It's a confident low rating and he's really using that length with some lean back at the end of the stroke, finishing those strokes off well, nothing rushed in the recovery, letting the boat move on underneath him. And he's leading by this little bit of clear water ahead of William Leganzowski from the USA. And these two scholars now pretty far clear of the rest of the field. So at some point, hopefully we'll see what's going on with this battle for the third and fourth qualifying slots. But right now, some really fine sculling, Jan. Yeah, both at the, at the front, both colors looks quite relaxed and the tempo looks really easy. You can see the Belar Belarusian sculler, really long, long stroke and also easy and relaxed. Now we see the rest of the field Where is the battle for the third position? Right now on the third and fourth position is the Italian scholar and the Portuguese, the Romanian scholar and the fifth positions. But as we said s several times today, the Romanians can rate really high. So we expect some fast finish from this Romanian scholar. Yeah, I totally agree with you, Jan. I don't think this third and fourth place is sewn up yet, so we could be in for a really exciting finish to see who's going to qualify from these five scholars up there at the front of the course. Nothing really changing here in terms of position. The uh, Belarusian has dropped his rate of striking by one pit, by one stroke a minute. He's just at 31 strokes a minute now. I think he's got to be feeling confident up there. But Rob, four boats to go through here and we're possibly in with a sprint here for this fourth uh, qualifying place. Yeah, it's not quite decided yet, is it? Looking comfortable, certainly, for Zelati of uh, Belarus. But in terms of uh, who is going to miss out, not entirely miss out, because they'll, of course, have another chance with the repercharge. But uh, it's a tight one to call. Jen jeden skifar z téhleté pětice nebude postupovat, ale paradoxně je to velký souboj o třetí, čtvrté a také páté místo. Mezi tím to takhle můžeme registrovat také v tuto chvíli, kdy nám zbývá posledních 180 metrů do cíle. Ty metry už se ale hodně krátí. Na první pozici zatím Juhem Zalaty, to je závodník reprezentující Bělorusko, Američan Ital na třetím místě. Jak to bude vypadat ale v souboji o čtvrté a páté místo? Čtyři postupují do čtvrtfinále. Yeah, it looks like it was between uh, the Belarusian and the American for uh, one and two. And uh, certainly a big push from Legonzowski of the USA. But he's going to take second place, just a length behind Belarus's Zalati in first. Third place is going to go just uh, to Portugal in uh, lane five. That's a great boost for him because he was trailing a bit. And uh, fourth place in lane two is Italy. So just missing out on this occasion uh, will be Romania's uh, Nico Ara. But he'll have another chance. He'll go again in the repressage. We look forward to seeing him there. Poslední dvoustovka nakonec rozhodla poměrně suverénně o tom, že reprezentant Rumunska nepostupuje a půjde také do oprav, jako celá řada ostatních závodníků v tom nabitém 29 členem startovním poliskyfařů. My hledáme ale ty nejrychlejší, kteří postupují rovnou do čtvrtfinále. Bělorusko, Spojené státy, Portugalsko, Itálie, tak to je sestaveno na prvním, druhém, třetím a čtvrtém místě v poslední rozjížce a jízdě prvního dne světového šampionátu v České republice v Račicích kategorie do 23 let.
So, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes racing on day one of the 2021 row World Rowing Under-23 Championships here from uh, Racice in the Northern Czech Republic. Uh, we've had super weather as well for today, and it's uh, ended in really perfect conditions. Not sure the weather's going to be quite so kind over the coming days, but we hope uh, it'll allow us to get through fairly interrupted. But uh, we'll obviously keep a close eye on things. Uh, so a lot to look forward to, but we've had a busy day today. 26 races in nine boat classes, and racing gets underway again uh, tomorrow at 9.30 in the morning local time with the heats of the uh, women's four. And that will take us through right the way through to just before midday, the heats of the men's eight. Then it will be the repechage from today, taking us uh, from midday through to the end of the day. The final race will be the uh, women's eight uh, rep. So a lot to look forward to tomorrow. And we hope the weather will be kind to us. But uh, thank you very much for joining us today. And I, I hope you've enjoyed our coverage. Uh, thanks, huge thanks to a commentary team of Cat Holloway. Colleen Saville and Jan Hayek, and to my colleague in the tower here, Mira Lenetz, who's been trying to teach me some Czech. So I'm going to just try and say thank you and goodbye. So, Gekoi, mm, he's giving me a slight nod, and a Naskledano. Perfect. <laughs> Mira, you're very kind. Thank you. Rock. Thank you very much. Moc děkujeme za to, že jste byli společně s námi první den mistrovství světa kategorie do 23 let. Viděli jsme 26 jednotlivých rozjížděk v devíti kategoriích. Pevně věříme, že budete společně s námi také zítra, protože začínáme v 9 hodin a 30 minut. Ještě jednou moc děkujeme a příjemný den. Těšíme se zítra v půl desáté.